7 o'clock, or a couple minutes after. Hi, Katie. Hi. Hi, Katie. Hello. How many tractors do you have? Just pretend. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there public comment for items not on the agenda? Just not. Additions or changes to the agenda? All right. Um, Alfred, do you have any quick updates for us? Uh, truck is in. Uh, just putting the decals on it and we're going to get some side work for it. Um, and get it registered. But and, that, the, and the body and all that stuff is on there? all on, files are on. Wow. Yeah. Now so who's going to drive that one? That's my truck. Oh. <laughs> I know you guys rotate. That's my position's truck, let's say that. Okay. <laughs> Your uh, position's yeah, true. that's the, the Your turn. place the 550, so that'll be on the block top. Oh, okay. And like the ranch. And... I'm going to see the. So. Already been busy plowing and sanding. And... Yeah, yeah. A little taste of it. Yeah. You've sanded a bunch of times already. Right? Yeah. And what's this? How's the. Are you using that magic stuff on the county road still? I, I haven't started yet. Um, Not cold enough. Mainly meant for colder temperatures, oh, okay. so I haven't started using it yet. But okay. I'm gonna ends up I'm gonna buy it from Guthrie, from County Small Fire, like right. I have in the past. So, so you guys, so we get a cheaper price. Yeah, he cheaper. buys it by bulk. Yeah, he's selling it us the same price. So um, awesome. Good. We're That's great. just gonna do sort of a, you know, I'll buy it from him. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And the I had a sand pile in Worcester didn't work out because they don't have enough room. Is there any way to put sand someplace like in the Curtis Pond swim area parking lot or someplace well, around? No there? place there that's really big enough. And this, the that's other straight. issue is not the tower part. Oh. The other issue you'd have to have a machine over there loaded with. And then right. time. To have a house somewhere to put it, put it in where it's warm. The machine. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What if we bought four shovels? Yeah, <laughs> big shovels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's sort of what limits us there, as far as having another pot. Because I've often thought of having a pot over here at all. Yeah, which we've done in the spring. You know, back in pre previous years, we never used it in the winter. And right. The parking area was was available. So how did you thought of that, but that's the issue is the, there's no machine to there's no machine to load it, okay. To load it with. So that's right. what it was. <laughs> well, it sounds like we might have the report from the UVM students soon. Yeah. Um, which will be interesting to see, you know. What they come up with. What they come up with, you know, check out their ideas or whatever. Okay, anything else on updates? Ed back for part time. Good for you. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So you have just Ed? Or you have right now it's just Ed. I've got a, a lead on another guy that's got a CDL and looking for some part time stuff. Now what does Grant, Grant Fair used to drive, but he didn't drive. He's not CDL. Oh, he don't have a CDL. He worked for Fairpoint. Yeah. Fairpoint, yeah. yeah. Hmm. yeah. <coughs> I also right. talked to Rob Richard. Oh, All right, so, he's got CDL now. Yeah. Well, he don't have CDL yet. Oh, yeah, he did. He's training. He's got his permit. Um, but he said that he'd be willing to work for some, but he needs a truck to use to take his license with. And he wants a Class A, so which would mean a truck and trailer. Mm -hmm. So I'm entertaining the idea of if he can get it scheduled, let him use our truck and trailer and go get the yeah. license. Yeah, if he's gonna you know, work then, for us. I yeah, mind. yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. I've right. gotten burnt there before. I've helped the guy get his license, and then he works two weeks and left. So I'm a little bit Wait. shy about that. But we know where to find him. Well, that's it. <laughs> we know Rob. He's, right. he's, he's local. local. He's you know. Yeah. Is he still so, in Hardwick now? I think he's still in Hardwick. Yeah. 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 I always like Rob. Yeah, so I don't, you know, that's that's pending. So he would be a, he'd be a good yeah. fill-in because he's got his other stuff going on in the summer and yeah. good for, for the winter months. And I'm sure he could use the money. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, okay. So that sounds like awesome. a sweet. Awesome. Prospect. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like the idea of Rob. Yeah. 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 But we'll leave it to you. He's not going to think you take over your job when you retire. <laughs> <laughs> well, not anytime soon, right? It'll be a while, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Before I retire. laughs> All right, so let's talk about tractors. John I, stuck, I put thing. stuff in the folder. Can you? Flip, flip, I, yep. I did it right on that. Yeah, you did because I looked at the pictures right. and I'm like, right. okay, it looks like a tractor. Let's see. It's got four wheels. Yeah, and air conditioning? Really? Yeah. Everybody's going to be vying for that job. No, you need right. that in a cab. Well, and also, you know, if you get Rob on board, he might be another person to do uh, the roadside mowing in the summer. Yeah, right. That's an idea. Yeah. I think that when you go, if you go back, the first one way at the top, say, so Oh, that one is, for some reason, it's black. It's a whole new bunch of pictures in it. Black hat. <laughs> Let's see if I can do a slideshow. If you double click on here, you go. And so where is it? It's up at Fournier's. It's a big farm equipment dealer. So that looks new good with all that That's one. tape on it. So this is... Uh, one of these mowers, he said this in a recent email, doesn't go with this tractor. I don't know what it is. I think it might be that one. It's um, a big, wide, like a seven foot flail mower. Yeah. This is like a brush hog type mower. Um, and this is one of the flail heads. There's two flail heads. They're identical. This is one. Mm -hmm. um, but this, they didn't know. <laughs> but that comes with it. Maybe these guys can configure something and make that work. But that's like an extra. That's a flail on the back. A big one. That's a seven footer. Oh, there we go. So there's the tractor with the boom. That's hitting wheels on no. the front, isn't it? Yeah. Is that what you want? Wow. It's two wheel drive. What it is? Two wheel drive. Oh. I wonder how much reach it has. Does it give you any of that? Go up. You can go up there and play with it. Yeah, that's why I guess we'll have to do it. Uh, now, where is this for you? Let me know, maybe I'll write up with you. Yeah. Where is this place? It's awesome. You want to take my husband with you, too? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they've got other toys. Oh, I'm there. sure. They have lots of toys. Now, what's that red button, I wondered? That's a what? So like that's a, a low oil oh, it's like a shut off yeah. system. So if you're, somebody's driving it, maybe. And then the engine oil runs low, it'll shut off where you wreck the motor. Oh, okay. And what year is it? I think it's like a 95, 96, something like that. So for tractors, that's not bad, though. Yeah. No, it only has 3,500 hours on it. And it was owned by another town, you said? In Connecticut. In Connecticut? Hours. Hmm. Oh, 3,356 hours. They just split the tractor as you have to do. They put a new clutch, pressure plate, and throw out bearing. The uh, clutch wasn't disengaged, they didn't know what was going on, so they opened it up. If you let a tractor sit for a long time and you don't tie the clutch pedal down to keep the, it loose, it went, it'll rust and get stuck to the back of the... Um... So you've had this experience, if you... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, that was the problem. But they wanted to place all those parts where they're in there, check the rear seal and all that. And have you dealt with this place before? Mm-hmm. And you've had good luck and... I'll throw them to you. <clears throat> you've dealt with them? Yeah, I've dealt with them. I go to their auction. They have an auction every spring. And so I've been there at auction as many times. They're one of them. They're preferable. Yeah. Um, and then you said they might, we wouldn't necessarily maybe pick it up until. Yeah, he said, yeah, I know you're not going to need it. You know, we were just talking up. I was up there getting parts for my tractor. So we were just talking kind of 
Okay. So he's very flexible. But um, the uh, road commissioner from Holland's next in line, we don't want it. So he's no, got one, he wants two. But that, he said at that price, I'll, to, I'll buy that and have two. Oh. <laughs> it's cheap. You know, you want it for a couple of years. You want it for a yeah. summer and it's paid for. Right. for two years and you make money. Um, so something you guys are going to go check out? Do you want the board to? Any more questions? Just wants to know. Just wants to know. It's, I'm, I'm calm, I don't know, but if, if, we're, if we say we're interested, we just want the real commission wants to take a look at it. Um, I, I told him we wouldn't prove it this select board meeting anyway. I told him, because now, whatever. Okay. It's really flexible. Oh. Well, how would, we, how would we pay for it? Well, that's what I wonder if we, how much money we have in the. Uh, Um, we can ask Sandra when we do the update on the treasurer's stuff. Or we'd have to put it on a, a budget item in the... In the warning, put a deposit on it. Put a deposit on it, but we can either put it on the warning or we can just put it in the budget. You know, it's not, you know, a $100,000 piece of equipment, so I don't... I feel a little more comfortable just putting it in the budget if we need to. Anyway, what everybody else could thinks. Warn too. Yeah, either way. I think I think that taxpayers would honor it if we put it on an article. Yeah. I think it'd be good to have that because we can talk about the roadside mowing because people are happy or unhappy depending on you talk to about mm -hmm. our experience of the last couple of years. Yeah. Well, I think we'd have better control with the invasives. Yeah. That we're right. dealing with. Right, and that's a big deal. That's the idea. I think that's a Yeah. And then we could do roadside mowing as often as we want to. Right. Have rows on it. Absolutely. Yeah. You kidding? <laughs> All righty. So you guys are going to coordinate on checking it out and. Yeah. We'll see if we can get together. Okay. Hello. Sorry I'm late, everybody. Sorry I'm late, friends. Mayor Coffin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, noted. <laughs> All right, enough, of, enough of tractor talk. Wow. Maybe show a quick picture to Sharon. You want to see a quick tractor no, that's picture? Right. I don't want to hold you up. I saw John's note about yeah. how awesome it is. Yeah, and these guys are going to coordinate me to go up and look at it. And... All right, CVRPC. Ready for me? Yep. Thank you for coming. <laughs> it's nice that it's close to home, right? I'd love to very much part of this conversation. So, um, a while back, uh, Alfie and Toby got me involved looking at the gully site mm -hmm. off of Moscow Woods Road and the stormwater master plan that CVRPC had done for the, the town is is long done. Mm -hmm. It's done last finished last winter, but mm -hmm. we finally have a grand opportunity to move some of those projects forward to final design. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm here tonight is just to let you know. Um, I think Toby was really interested, and the town was really that was like the top, the top two that sites was, was to deal with the post office. And that's the runoff. The I, have, I have handouts for everybody. And, and that's the top site from the road origin inventory report, right? Um, not necessarily. This is the stormwater master plan. There's so many so, PBR things. I know. Events. So I keep track of them all. Got five you got one for Alfie. I'll give one to Alfie. You have this already, but just take one and pass it around. Um. So there's the road erosion inventory. Is one animal that's out of the permit requirement that came out from um, the DEC considering right. okay. runoff from roads. The M Municipal, Municipal Roads, roads General Permit. permit. So it's okay. kind of a different animal. This is what the stormwater master plan that we did that was all the three towns in the Kingsbury mm -hmm. branch, Woodbury, East Montpelier, and Callis. And the town, um, along with the consultants, Watershed Consulting Associates, identified five top priority sites. 
Um, and two of those sites were right where the post office is in East Callis, um, as well as right by, uh, what's the name of that road? Oh. Fellows Road, right by um, Alfie's uh, trailer, that part of the road, Fellows Road, where there's mm -hmm. a culvert that goes underneath some treatment right there before that culvert to really treat the stormwater before it gets spit out of those pipes that have caused, the stormwater from those pipes have caused a pretty big gully on John Reese's land. Right. Yeah. Um, so John Reese really, you know, he's 100% supportive and really wants to. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. I hadn't heard that part. So, yeah, I talked to him recently and he wrote a letter of support um, as well. Um, I've been in touch with Scott and Chris Hudson from the Rec, Rec Association because they yes. technically own the post office land. Right. Um, so they're on board. Um, so basically we just need the support of the town to move forward. How about forward. that house right on the corner that changed hands a couple years ago? The um, house. The, the gray house or the white house? I mean it's white, white, it's white. mean Great. weird colonies. Yeah, she is not supportive of anything. She wanted to see um, final designs long before she would approve mm -hmm. any does any any moving work forward, there? but she kind of wanted the you know horse before the cart yeah. because you can't really right. have Captain final up. you can't really design anything final until you collect the data that you need to mm -hmm. engineer it. So she wasn't really willing to move forward and asked myself and Carrie Garvey from Watershed to please stop. Um, so do so we need to do on anything on? That property, the no, that no, nope, the, oh. so the design was changed to the post to right on the post office site. So okay. the original idea was on Beth Harrington's land, but she doesn't want us to do anything on her land. Mm -hmm. So that's why we moved the design to the post office. So and they're mm -hmm. fine doing it there. So I figured they would be. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, I have, uh, this is get through the, what's now called, used to be called Clean Water Block Grant Program, but it's called the Design Implementation Block Grant Program. And it's from the Department of Environmental Con Conservation. And, um, you know, it's a chunk of money that's available to forward um, projects to final design and implementation. And the governor was very set that this is you know, only things that are really ready to go. So this is in DECs. Yep. Yeah. So um, it's kind because of, it's capital funds basically. Mm -hmm. So, and they're they're funding final designs as well. So I was able to sneak. I'm sneaking in these two projects mm -hmm. um, with the intent of bundling. They're two separate applications, but with the intent of bundling them into one grant agreement. Do we have to do the municipal roads general permit for this? No, this has nothing to do with nothing the permit. Nothing to do with that, okay. The only thing that it has to do with the permit is that this design is going to recommend some things that, um, some best management practices along the road and the mm -hmm. culverts that would also be included in yeah. the municipal roads general permit. So you may be able to check your box off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't necessarily need follow. final design to do your, right. you know, right. your we'll ditch work or whatever. Sure. Um, and you said it was in kind. So the only match is in kind. Um, so there's no cash match required mm -hmm. for this grant. And it would just be in kind time for these guys if they would be available to um, remember how last time you guys helped out a little. I don't know if you did any <coughs> digging for them to do any test pits yet for last time. <coughs> no, I think no. We did, they discovered that the landowner didn't want it. To right. There. So we're going to need to probably do some test pits just to check out the soils mm -hmm. for the final design so that they can calculate the correct infiltration rate. So it would be maybe like half a day or two uh, or something right. like that just to get the back help and, right. and help those guys out. Yeah. Um, on the town level, if the town would like to, you know, see the proposals from the engineers and weigh in at all, we can do that as well. We can involve you folks if you want. Toby wants to be involved or Whoever to that. Well, that, I just think to, at least Alfred should. Yeah, be. so you can count that time just even looking at the proposals of mm -hmm. the final design. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's in kind time meeting with us mm -hmm. to discuss what's the, what's the, the project. 
The total is 33? So that's for, I think you're looking at the implementation dollars and then as far as yep, for a second. Sure. So for the final designs, this is just for final design. So the total project mm -hmm. amount from Moscow Woods Gully to implement would be 33,000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're just looking at the final design number, which is 6250 plus um, about $1,000 minor, addition, minor additional design items. And usually what I do is I just bump that up a little, about 20% because this is from Watershed and you never know if the other firms are going to are gonna be that low. So um, the cap for the grant is $20,000. So as long as you're below $20,000, you're fine. So even if I bundle these, the total of them is going to be less than twenty thousand, so that's why I can bundle it into one grant agreement. I thought you said Does that makes sense. Thirty three. No, he said it was thirty three. Well, know. that's what it says here. That's, that's for the. That's for design. construction. Oh. So this is just for final design. So I'll have to come back. Oh, I see. And get another grant for construction okay. when we get to that phase. So this, uh, you think this would be a permanent fix? Really. Let's hope so. <laughs> that's, a, that's the idea. That's a tough one there. Huh? Yeah. That's it. That's for the uh, that's for the engineers to solve for us. And um, it'll really stop a lot of that stormwater well, got, that's coming down that hill. So just by divert, just by like stopping that one pipe that's coming yeah. down Batten Batten Hill Batten, yeah. Batten Road and going across. No just by stopping all of that there. water. Yeah. So the idea. At the post office site is an underground system, mm -hmm. sort of like a chamber system, like the, these kind of like semicircle plastic chambers. I wish I brought pictures mm -hmm. from Northfield because we just put one in. Um, and there'll just be, you know, a few of those semicircle pipes where what happens is the stormwater comes in and then makes its way through the, through those pipes and mm -hmm. then infiltrates to the ground. Everything's so sandy there. I don't expect yeah. there to be a lot of right. discharge from it. So what about maintenance of the... So that that's the other piece up? is that um, in this letter uh, is that, and I, I know that you guys have been on board with this idea, we just need the select board to approve this, whether or not uh, the town would be, um, be willing to take on the operation and maintenance of the system once it's built. And they kind of, they kind of want to know that. So can what we it entails, it's like, this or can we do it yeah. with our equipment? No, you, you'll need a vac truck, but you don't need to buy a vac truck. No, <laughs> it would just be to get fowlers to come. Um, probably so once good. every couple of years. Um, we're doing the same thing in Woodbury. Uh, doing final designs for them right now. So I'm thinking that what would be great is if, you know, the two towns could good. work out maybe hiring Fowlers at the same time to come to both places and mm -hmm. maybe make it a little cheaper. So Fowlers could suck it out and then like dump it at our garage or something so they're not... No, I don't think they would dump it at your garage. It would just go to like a... To, to the yeah. Fowler. I don't think it's because they're as hazardous. Fowlers have to pay a disposal fee. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to get dumped out of there. Right. It wasn't hazardous until they sucked it out of there. It wasn't hazardous until they put it in the tank. <laughs> does does that, Alfie, in your understanding, would that become part of something you and the road crew it would? Oh, I think it would be. Keep an eye on. I would have to order. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. An eye on. You yeah. would know it's time. Organize. You would or like. I just want to know like whose yeah. jo whose job list is this going on to? Yeah, and then the That's, other. Well, yeah, it'd be no different than. Mm -hmm. The colors that we make right now. So just you know, just a little history. You know, these guys have been blamed for the gully just for putting gulf culverts in, but it's not their fault. It's the nature of the watershed, all the water right. coming down and the sandy soils, and just happen to be coming through the stormwater system. So the stormwater has to be fixed yeah. to remedy the situation that's been caused by the gully. The, the gully is also going to have a design element in it too, where um, we're doing one in plain, a design in Plainfield right now, and we actually just finished a construction in Barry City, where um, 
you know, pretty much try to stabilize the water that's going through there and slow it down so mm -hmm. that it stops eroding that and it stops head cutting mm -hmm. up that valley. Um, so that's going to have a much lesser operation and maintenance component. It's more going to be like checking it out and anything get washed out. And I'm willing to be part of that team yeah. just as a volunteer, well, you yeah, know, just because I'd like to be a yeah. So you'd like us to sign this letter tonight, right? Yeah, and I have one dated today. If you want so to oh, you have a head. you want to have a letterhead. Yours is better. Yeah. yeah. I just put it. I put yours on Perfect. the town letter. Thank you. Yes, that would be great because then I can just include that in the application. So is there any more? Being what? What does that say? We're. Um, I thought it was in the documents. So um, it just approving says, the grant application in support of the grant application, and as well as committing to operation and maintenance for a minimum of 10 years at these two sites, mm -hmm. yeah. which is what they want you to sign on for right. Right. before they give you any money. Do so you want to make a motion to authorize me to sign this letter? So moved. Is there a second? Yeah. All right. Further discussion? I didn't know. I think Alfred had something he wanted to say. Do you want to say anything? Um, anything about well, this? Well, I just got a question that the 33000 is that cover? <laughs> Down below also. Both, both so there's two no, there's no. two cost estimates in here. The thirty-two thousand is the jelly one. And then um, on page twenty-nine here, thirty-four thousand for the infiltration system. Okay. 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 But the thirty-three thousand would include, you know, treatment at the culvert inlet of Bellows Road. Yeah. Includes that as well. Okay. And the cost culvert. Okay, are you ready to vote on the letter? Yes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. So when's, when do we implement, you think? So if we get a design, these contracts are slow to right. happen too, even once mm -hmm. you get the money. Mm -hmm. I got, um, what am I supposed to do? I got, uh, <laughs> thank you so mm -hmm. much, everyone. Um, I got a, you know, grant I got grant awards for Woodbury to do two designs in March, and I still don't have a contract. Mm. So. So it may not be this summer. Maybe. This no, summer. we'll definitely won't construct this okay. summer. Hopefully, we could do it the following summer. But that's these contract the block grant contracts tend to move a little quicker mm -hmm. than the other ones. Oh, the other piece I, I need to mention is is that I would draw the, uh, in, a memorandum of agreement between CVRPC and the town, mm -hmm. um, just outlining everything for the process, which will be pretty simple because it's just a design. But when we would get to the construction piece, it might be a little bit more to look more at. involved yeah. if these guys are going to help with the construction at all, especially if they want to. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Thank you for following up. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy yeah. Thanksgiving. All right, Sandra. Can you see that one Yep. I'll fill you in on any other stuff that might sure. come later. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Thanks Alfred. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, thank you. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. All right. All right. Um, take it away, madam. Right, treasurer's report. Uh, we are um, we are high on revenues primarily because we are still in the process of property of our tax collection effort. So we are, um, at this point, we've collected 72% of our budgeted revenues, but that's an inflated number. And the deadline is the 29th for post -time. The dead, the two-week grace period. Deadline for the, the two-week two grace period <coughs> deadline is November 29th. Great. Which by, includes the post -time. Which includes the post -time. Okay. I did, I'm sure everybody else did too, I did read your whole report, so. Um, we're at about 48% of our budgeted expenditures. Uh, even This may appear to be high, but there are one-time expenditures early in the fiscal year, so 
for the time being, we are on track. Um, office, town office interim redesign. That project is complete. The expenses to date are roughly $1,700. Uh, Andy Felice is uh, to provide us a bill. Yeah, I saw your email. You wanted to do to break that bill in half, or to give us separate bills. The I good news say. is, though, that he did do some work on the the roof. The roof, I think, is done. At least it's a fix for now. Yeah. So that's, that's good news. Correct. And we want and we want him to break out that bill from from the interim office redesign. So the select board allowed a four thousand dollar budget for this interim redesign and we're going to be well below yeah, that. 1700. The only um, continuing bills in connection with that design is for the storage container at $75 a month. So town, as soon as town hall is ready, uh, a large portion of what is in there will go over to the town hall, although we will expect to continue to need that storage container until uh, we have shredded certain of the documents in there. So, you know. But $75 a month is very inexpensive. Yes. And Steeplechase met with you guys the other day? Steeplechase did. We are just about at the final design for the renovation. He has a few tweaks to make. Mm -hmm. His initial salvo was really excellent. It incorporated all of our requests and um, he said his knee-jerk reaction is, is that it's going to come in under 50. We're going to uh, repurpose materials as we can. We're mm -hmm. going to put walls on top of the carpeting so we don't have to rip up carpeting all in, Under 50 what? Thousand. To renovate this office? Yes. And the reason that's important is that's about what we have in that account. In the so there's rewiring that is involved, and uh, it, it should we should be fine. We don't know quite yet. Mm -hmm. He hasn't specked it out. Yeah, well, when they're ready to present us the... We didn't have a number when we approved it. We haven't yeah. seen the design. You haven't seen the design. No, well, but I mean, we approved just we, the... We just approved the idea. Kind of getting to the design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Highway revenues, we are uh, have collected 90% of budgeted revenues. Uh, the remaining revenues will come from state aid to highway. Mm -hmm. The expenditures, highway again is at about 46% of their budget. Um, there are certain one-time payments that occur early in the fiscal year, so we are on track, where's Alfred, on track with that. Oh, um, Alfred has already told you that international mm -hmm. truck lease has closed and we've been reimbursed the money that we fronted for the purchase of the chassis. We put it back into the equipment fund. That is correct. So, so my question is then, so, and maybe we'll get there quickly. Um, how much is in the capital equipment fund right now? A year to date, it's eighty-seven thousand nine hundred eight dollars. We have a payment uh, that will hit around January third for the two thousand nineteen Weststar in the amount of forty thousand one hundred twenty-four dollars. So after that payment, that uh, account will have roughly forty-seven thousand eight hundred dollars in it. Okay, that's would be in January. Correct. Uh, as far as our balance sheet is concerned, until we pay our school taxes, uh, it is inflated again by our tax effort, but we're, we're really on target. As of October, as of the end of October, which is where this report uh, focuses, we are, uh, we have $98,000 plus an outstanding first installment taxes. That is a little ahead of uh, where we were last year at the same period in time. So we're hoping that that is not a predictor for the ultimate uh, amount of delinquent taxes that we're going to have to collect this year. Uh, delinquent taxes for 2018 uh, outstanding are $9,800. 
Of that balance, roughly 7,100 7, has been turned over to Gloria Rice for collection. Mm -hmm. uh, the remaining delinquencies, I, I expect to be able to collect except for the one parcel, um, which, which I talked about in an email mm -hmm. with you folks, and if the um, select board determines that it is the right thing to do, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I recommend a motion to send that to Attorney Rice for collection. And the reason that it has to, it's being handled as a one-off is because it's lower than our normal threshold. Yes, we wouldn't typically pursue that amount of delinquent tax, but there's been no payment, there is no agreement, and there's been no contact. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just wanna make sure we're following our normal yep. procedure. Yes, we are. Yeah. And, yeah. and we wouldn't send it until after the 29th. Correct, because, because we want to see if... If it happens to come in during the grace period. It may come in during the grace period, and also uh, we would, as long as the select board mo makes a motion for that as well, we would hook the delinquent 2019 taxes onto that tax amount as well, yeah. because there's been no contact and no payment on that either, which is consistent with my expectations at this point in time based on what I know. So, Sandra, the uh, $166,154 that was collected from the 2018 tax collection effort, um, is, that, is that spread across the entire year? Yes. That collection, or do we get the big, biggest portion proportion at the beginning, six months? I'm wondering what the impact when we carry that kind of a balance the deficit, you know, ongoing really. It is right? we catch ongoing. up and, and then we haven't yet the same we're maintaining a close to two hundred thousand dollar tax deficit. Deficit every year that's maintained. Well by the continues. by the time you get to the end of the year, the end of the fiscal year, you're historically about sixty or forty thousand dollars in and then by this point in time, at least since I've had the position, we're, we're down very, very low, and we're collecting 2018 taxes and no other tax, tax uh, delinquent taxes from prior years. So we're only doing 2018. Yeah. But it's, it seems like we're carrying balance. Well, but let's, yeah. let's break your question down a little more. So, so the big bubbles of when taxes come in are when they're due in August and then when they're due in November. Correct. And then there's... 175 even at the end of November still out there if you were to say where is there another bubble another point after which you can say you know what and three quarters of that That's, is that gone by end of January or whatever that point is or is it really equally spread across the next year I, I would have to research that so but okay. by by June, we're at around 60,000. So about 100 of that comes in over the next six months. Yeah, because you, you really do a good job of getting people to do a monthly payment or? Well, we, I, I already have people who have contacted me to say simply they, they are not gonna pay their taxes except after they are due and by virtue of a payment plan. There's That's all they can do. What yeah. percentage is that? 100 176,000 is what percentage of the overall tax? I, I'd have to get the numbers. I, I don't have those numbers in front of me. I mean, I'd need the entire yeah, yeah. tax separate number, and yeah. I don't have that. Well, when I mean, you get, when you get, when you get a chance, that might be something worthy of looking into what percentage if, if you give me a minute uh, I'll yeah, just pull it up on the right. uh, oh okay do you want me to do that now I can no, no, answer no. that question I just don't have that in mind no, no, because I don't want to hold you up so that we will not move it up so but Is there no order time? <laughs> I, I, it's it's a it's simple <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of what is our yeah. total budget, really. So I can look at the 2018 tax collection effort. Is this next year? 
Um, I managed to stuff dinner down my face before oh, okay. I got in the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I think the problem for Ruben is he finds this interesting. He might. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Everything you always want to know about Dallas taxes and finances. Well, it's, it sounds amazingly similar to East Montclair. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> Yeah, right, and right down to the discussion with the um, sorry, why is my phone um, right down to the discussion about the mower. Yeah, because that's a conversation that we had a year or two. Yeah, yeah. you guys bought a brand new one. Purchased one this year. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is people are already having a hard time paying their taxes. Right. We've got the school debt consolidation trauma yeah. that right. the Callis is paying for debt that they didn't incur. And now they want a two point, at least a two point seven yeah. seven percent increase. Which in is the, really a five percent increase, but a lot of it's been absorbed by. They had a, a so, funds, right? Three hundred grand. Funds, so Dallas so. taxpayers are just having a really hard time. So, I think I think concern. the statistic I heard, and don't quote me out there in TV land. Um, I think I heard in the next five or ten years, maybe it's ten years that. 52% of Vermonters will be in excess of 65 years of age. Which percent? 52%. That's crazy. And so that means a lot of those folks will be retired, mm -hmm. which means they'll see a decrease in their income, mm -hmm. likely by half or more. It's at least and then they're going to get to qualify for the property tax abatement based on in income sensitivity formula and then that's got to be picked if up. If we still have it. If we still have it. So right. what happens is when we get to that crisis point, there won't be enough revenues to fund. This is serious wow. business. Okay, you got your figures So out? has a two, in 2018, it, the outstanding, the amount that needed to be collected in delinquent taxes was 3.71% of the total amount billed, and the total amount billed was four million seven hundred thirty dollars one hundred seventy-five. So three, not quite four percent. Not quite four percent. Four percent is outstanding over the course of. It has to be collected as delinquent. It has to be collected. Yeah, and that's interesting information to have. I really had no sense of what it, what it. It's, not, it's, it's a lot of money. I mean, 4% is, is a small percentage. Right, $4 but, million. Dollars. Right, but $175,000 is what? Well over, it, it's bigger than the town office's budget as a whole. Probably. No, no, Actually, the town office budget is in excess of $800,000, but it is a significant That's number. Taxes too. Right, right, right. I mean like just literally running this building. Never mind. It's not important. I'm just saying. No, I'm. I'm just saying that it's. A, it's like if you if we lost one hundred and seventy six thousand dollars, oh, something that we all appreciate, like keeping this office open and paying the town clerk, would be gone. Right. Well, it's important that it gets collected. Yeah. That's for sure. So so. Just with all the school stuff. So if we have. $175,000 in delinquent, $76,000 in delinquent taxes, and we have to make it up by taking out a loan. We cover that, um, and we're covering the school taxes as well as a town. Yes, that is Does our it, obligation what, to pay. That is. We can't hold. That money. is interesting, because we're no longer we we're no longer we don't own any educational assets any longer. It's owned by this consolidated district. Why are we on the hook to collect their tax? It seems like the next stage <laughs> in this Act 46, 49 discussion needs to be, you guys want to consolidate? Then it needs to be the consolidated district that does the tax collecting and the, and the effort. Hmm. You know, why are we spending staff time? It's, it's an extension of mm -hmm. the continuous vote meetings and the cost to the town. We were funding staff costs and effort and the effort to get loans and all this stuff based and on our town's have, credit. We have to what pay. if our town had crummy credit? Well, then we're, yeah. also, we're also paying the interest on the loan, even if it's... Right, well, that gets reimbursed through the 
assessment on delinquent with taxes. Well, it's just right? just I hope so. to get you I think so. to I don't think it's enough. So yeah. supposed to. to be clear, there's a statute that says we the town is responsible to collect the taxes. Right. So there would need to be some statutory, <laughs> statutory change. changes. Right. One I and that, yeah. two, we pay what we owe minus the delinquent taxes outstanding at mm -hmm. that time. So on December 29th, if we still have, if I have 130,000 or 140,000 dollars in delinquencies on that payment, mm -hmm. which is likely, mm -hmm. um, three quarters of which are school taxes. Right. We pay our school tax bill minus the delinquency, and that is permitted by okay. statute. Okay. Now there is a true up in April where the state figures out what what we really owe because the grand list, while it is set as of April 1, continues to have tweaks right up through the time that you set the tax rate due to errors and emissions. You saw that this yeah, year. Mm -hmm. And there have been continuous tweaks to the grand list. Folks have come in and out of um, current use. There have been late homestead declaration filings and so forth. So in April, the state takes all the information, figures out what we really owe, and then we pay them the balance. So that's pre it's we pretty important. The state or the school? The school. So it's it's important that we get that money in. And, and you saw over time last year how those um, outstanding delinquent taxes did affect our cash flow and some of the decisions you made in spending. Yeah, and so, they do. And they do. And that's what I'm saying. It's getting harder and harder for the callous taxpayers to come up with the money, especially now that we're paying off deficit. It's time we have a conversation with our representatives. That maybe the district, the school district, needs to have this conversation. Yeah. I'll talk to the chair. Well, that's just one piece of it. Right, yeah. one piece. Yeah. But it's an important one. Yeah. Okay, sorry. No, I, that is the extent of my report. And Any we're now questions? doing, and we're now doing one of the things that the auditors asked us to do, which was the NEMRIC stuff, and then I'm getting the documents from the NEMRIC. Right. So, review, so that's another thing we can check our out. Audit, our audit, our audit was very clean, the cleanest audit you've had since FY15, frankly. You had no material deficiencies. You had one significant deficiency, which is not a black mark. It's more like a gray mark. And that was the cemetery stuff. No, that that wasn't a gray mark. That was a recommendation. Oh. But in uh, the significant deficiency category, their recommendation was that there be oversight in the journal entry, the general journal entries that right. I do. So general journal entries are would be, for instance, uh, if I mispost an expense to an expense line. And we, and we want to put it in the correct expense line, that's not a revenue, that's not an expense, that is moving a number from one budget line to the next, and that would be, a correction. and that would be an example of a general journal entry. But general journal entries can happen, certainly not every day, but they happen relatively frequently throughout the month. And so in order to allow the town to continue to do business and keep its books up to date, we, I worked with the accountants and we formulated a um, procedure whereby our monthly auditor, NIMRIC, reviews all journal entries and any questions that may arise. She notes them in writing. Uh, she sends the entire report and any comments she has both to Denise and I simultaneously via email so that puts the select board instantly on notice of any findings she may have. I then respond with whatever documentation she asks for. That response goes both to her and to Denise. So the select board again is on notice of the response. And that has satisfied, and that is satisfactory right. to the auditors. And that was really the only tweak right. and that they know, asked I us did, to make. I do, I did review mm -hmm. what they sent, what's, uh, is it Cynthia? Cynthia. Cynthia sent. 
and Sandra's responses. So I did read. I did review it. Yeah, she had a couple of questions about the auditor's general. Yeah, my, my general journal entries. So they put all that in writing. I it, they just sometimes like things to be booked differently than I had them. So yeah, we managed that for them. Thank you for Good. your so, excellent work as usual. We are, but just to go back, we don't. We haven't had to take a tax uh, a note in anticipation of taxes because we have a very in two years we have a very strong general fund balance. And so when I talk about we want to be careful what or where we end up at the end of the year, that fund balance covers us for the first two months of the fiscal year. next fiscal year yeah, until yeah. we begin to get our tax money in. So the town, when you wonder, well, how are we going to cover ourselves? One way to do that is by maintaining a, a healthy general fund balance. The auditors find our fund balance to be healthy and it is uh, carrying us all of the grant expenses and in particular in the summer we have significant grant highway grant expenses that we that are unbudgeted and won't be reimbursed perhaps for 18 months right so we're doing very well yeah well yeah we're yeah. doing very well yeah, no, but but, yeah. we've made a lot of good improvements i think i, I did, you have yeah so our prognostication has been pretty accurate in terms of anticipated expenses and we don't come up with a lot of overruns, cost overruns. No, you... Despite the weather changes changing all along. Year well, year. and that remains to be seen. You're going to, yeah. you know, a budget is a guide. You're making your yeah. best guesses. Uh, all, we, yeah, that's all we can do. We have, on, look at the weather we've had in the last right. couple of days. I'm running payroll now. And I have significant overtime, so yeah, yeah. We just don't know. We do our best. Yeah, we do. We all do our best. I think. Um, I just wanna. I I think I can leave, and then you can come on. But uh, in your budget notebooks, you're gonna notice a tab V three eleven eleven. Yeah, we're gonna go over it. Later I'm on. not gonna go over it. You guys are gonna yeah. go over it. You and I went over it. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. dial you in. You can do it. <laughs> okay. uh, give me half an hour to get home. Um, you're going to notice that there are orange stripes throughout that um, budget development worksheet. Yeah. And those are changes or additional comments since you met the last time. Yeah. So you're, you're going to, in fact, you have your alpha budget sheet. Mm -hmm. The next budget sheet, which is also a live spreadsheet in the Google Docs. And you also uh, you have the changes since that second budget sheet, right. um, and you will continue. We will continue to update you. Then the next budget sheet you have, the orange will be removed, and then the the next changes from tonight to the next meeting okay. will be noted in some other color, so that you you are going to have a a. Um, You'll be able to track your budget as it goes from meeting to meeting. So the well, orange is going to wait. No, you said the orange is going to be gone, but is it going to? You're going to keep that. That's going to be. It's right. going to. That right. will stay in your budget. Okay, so we can look back. But we don't. I, That's you, you don't want 15 Thank colors for every no. meeting you have. No. But no, for but this meeting, and you're see gonna, when it landed. Yes, you're going to see that there have been <coughs> changes over the last couple of weeks and. Rather than have to search for them, I highlighted them for you so you. you and you'll note on the agenda that says we're going to review the proposed draft tonight. One thing in your packages tonight is a letter from Nimric, mm -hmm. and that letter from Nimric announces that uh, its own cybersecurity requirements have required an increase in its support. I have also included a couple of emails from various treasurers. Uh, I still think it's a good deal with them. I really do. Uh, they, it is reflected in your budget that you see tonight in orange. You can take a look at those comments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because we asked you to check and see if their fee was going to go up. Well, this is their, uh, this is Numeric's support fee. So we run six of their applications. 
we can call up five times a day, the listers can call, Judy can call, I can call, they answer our questions, they walk us through any snags in the program. That is going to, from, that was $1,480, $1,500, it's now up to $5,000, big jump. Their disaster recovery agreement, um, there's one for the general government side and one for the Lister's CAMA program. They have stayed the same. Cynthia's hourly rate, our monthly auditor's hourly rate, has remained the same. Okay. So you all, Good again, you will see that, you will see that in your, um, in orange. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. This is extensive and wonderful. Work, Sandra. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thanks for staying there, too. Oh, no trouble. That's my job. All righty. Thanks, nice. Ruben. Very nice. We're yeah. only, what? We're running 17 minutes late. Totally fine. It actually gave me time to fix something for a client. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's all good. All right. So, Join us. <laughs> so the timing was perfect. Thank you. Do you know all of us? Yes. Yes. Sharon. I, I don't think we've met. Hi. I'm Sharon. Ruben. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. But yes, I, I met everybody else. Katie. Okay. I hate it. Except for the two of you. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. We need to do a delinquent tax um, motion. Oh, sorry, John. So I think we should know it since Sandra mentioned she sent us an email that it was it was just giving us a heads up that we were gonna she was gonna ask us to make a one off decision which she did in her presentation. Right. Noted. Uh, I just want to make sure I get the parcel number right. Um, so let me see if I do this right. I'll make a motion that we send parcel number 212400, delinquency amount, um, hmm, uh, outstanding delinquency for 2018 is 367.52. And unless he pays his, and if he doesn't pay his 2019 taxes by the end of the grace period, which is November 29th, either in hand or postmark, that we send um, that parcel number to our delinquent tax attorney, Gloria Rice. Including the 2019 delinquent taxes. Right. right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Second. Okay. Are you ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 John, are you voting? Sure, I'm with you. Okay, you say yes. All right, any opposed? Hearing none. So Sandra, we just voted to send that parcel 212400 to Gloria, um, including the 2019 after the end of the grace period. Well, did I didn't hear your motion, I'm so sorry. Will you, uh, did the motion encompass the other two taxpayers as well to get their 2019? Uh, I thought we were just voting on, I just thought we were voting on this 212-400 parcel. If you, if the board so deems it appropriate, you might consider making a second motion to bring in the other two taxpayers we have sent to her and motion to collect their 2019 taxes. No, let's comment. do this, let's do this no one. Payment. No, one. there's been nothing, they're not gonna pay. So let's do this motion first, and everybody voted yes. Now we need a new motion to <coughs> send, what other person? The 2019, the unpaid 2019 taxes of the other two delinquent tax parcels. And they are, you have that, I think that's in the bag. For the same reasons as the first one. Outstanding in 20, well it's at 18, and no response, no plan, okay, no, 
So we can do them by parcel number. You can do them by parcel these number. These two are okay, the, so let's do these. But the reason for that is it's Gloria Rice's. As long as you have a motion to that effect, mm -hmm. Gloria says there's no reason to collect the 18s and then Right, collect right. the 19s in, in seven or eight months. But that, that is, actually that's not right. doing the taxpayer any favor because right. then all. The nulls are all late. The, yes. So, you're right. so the, late recommend, anyway. the recommendation is then to make a motion to send parcel number 430054 and A17610 2018 taxes <coughs> and 2019 taxes if they aren't paid by the end of the grace period, which is November 29th, to the delinquent tax attorney, Gloria Rice. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Sorry for the delay. It's all right. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. So, shall we get started? So, uh, just to kick off, Ruben, uh, definitely want to thank you for participating in this process with us and bearing with us, bearing with us as we've worked our way through it. It's been a, a learning experience for everyone, I think it's safe mm -hmm. to say. Um, and uh, I've tried to, um, my limited, um, technical experience and knowledge, um, be something of a translator um, of these different uh, proposals received and feeding the information to the rest of the select board so they could have an opportunity to think it through um, and answer questions to the best of my ability. But uh, now we're at the point where we pretty much um, used up all my expertise, so we thought, now's the time to bring Ruben in. <laughs> Now we're going to go direct. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for joining us. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for, for having me. And uh, you know, I'm entirely happy to answer questions. I try to keep the jargon, it feels like, to a minimum in my proposals. But I also do this every day. So I know that there's right. a language barrier sometimes between even what I think is clear and what is received on the, <laughs> on the <laughs> other side. Well, one of the things that I just wanted to raise is kind of a, a thing for me, for whatever reason. When you met with Cliff and I in the office, you were going to go back to your office and you were going to look at some of the charges that we incurred for, I forget which time period it was. Oh, it was the whole thing that was going on with the firewall and the upgrade. And right. You were going to go back and look and see the charges that you that we incurred and do a review of it just to make sure that somewhere along the way and then I never we never heard from you my apologies um, I, I did go back and review and unfortunately I do this occasionally go back and I do what I said that I would do and then and you forget? totally forgot I can understand so, that. <laughs> um, I'm with I, you. I, can I totally did. Understand that. Um, after we met, I went back and I had a uh, sat down with Holland, and we went back through. And I this is six months mm -hmm. or so now. Yeah. So I don't recall exactly the outcome, other than I didn't. If I didn't respond, I didn't find anything that that um, said that I needed to do something or or mm -hmm. I would have certainly put a credit on or something. I, I apologize. It was not that's not how I intend to do things to you know say I'll do something and then just vaporize. Um, but I did go back to the office and have a, uh, a chat with Holland just to sort of go back through the ticket history and mm -hmm. see and again I don't recall the specifics okay. but um, but I, I definitely did go back and I apologize for not reporting back. I would be happy to sort of revisit that and you know let you know I can yeah. send an email back to her. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Okay, so I well, want to make sure that that actually happens this time. Well, and the issue, if I'm remembering Denise, was a, a system challenge or software challenge that took 
an inordinate amount of time to something address. right I can't remember it was like in June or July I think that we met with you with my then yeah, remember it, yeah it was you might be right it, what the issue was around was the amount of time it took to come to a solution oh that was the as a result of the network Nimrick had their upgrade. Remember this issue, and um, it was bouncing off our firewall and causing yep. her computer, especially in systems, to crash a lot. Mm -hmm. And you know, right, yes, right. it's That's understandable it when you've got multiple um, providers and different uh, systems interacting to sift through it all and mm -hmm. get it. But yeah, that was the question. Was, was the there an opportunity yeah. to um, maybe give us a credit towards some of that work that was done? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep it a little general because I don't recall the exact specifics. I recall the situation with great pain. It was I remember it, it was painful, painful for everybody. For everybody, um, we service more than one town, um, and this issue was a very specific interaction between and i'm going to be a little direct and 100 percent caused by the the i snickered a little bit to myself when you said that nimerick support fees went up um, because what they did was they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar they had really sensitive information that was completely unsecured on customer yeah, networks, and they, um, somebody called them out on it publicly after right. having chased them down for mm -hmm. years, literally years, to properly secure the data. And only when it went public did Rimrick suddenly do this knee-jerk fix. And what they did is they mm -hmm. said, okay, well, we, we're just gonna encrypt all of this data in place on your, on your system, which makes total sense and is the right thing to do, except that some of you may have heard of ransomware. Mm -hmm. And the mechanism by which ransomware works is it goes onto your file system and it opens a whole slew of files and encrypts them and then closes them back up serially. So it goes file, 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 open, 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 encrypt, 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 close files. And then you can't open them. Well, if it's ransomware, you can't open them. If it's Nimric, you absolutely can open them because you have the keys. But the problem is that every modern antivirus system on the planet uses what's called heuristics. And heuristics is basically, it stands back and it watches behaviors and it uses predictive analysis and it says, whoa, what is that program doing opening all of those files up all of a sudden and running an encryption routine? And it shuts it down. Oh. And we went round and round and wow. round and round, like smashing heads on desks, trying to get Nimric to um, to do something different than this particular behavior. There's uh, frankly, would have been nice if they could the have done something a little different. But the way that Nimric stores their memory. data is that it's very fractured. It's a whole bunch uh, of files. It's not like a big database uh, that you can just wrap in an encryption okay. routine. Yeah. It's like hundreds of files that are in this series of directories. So in order to do the way that they did, they had to basically behave like ransomware, which we went round and round and round, both with Nimric and then with our upstream vendor, who provides, which is Bitdefender, um, who provides the actual antivirus and heuristic engine, and they kept sending us, you know, well, okay, try this, and everything that they sent tripped, like the Nimric was still tripping them up, yeah. and this was this was six, eight weeks. Yeah, I know these ladies just, were ready to pull like, their hair out. We so were why weren't they directly communicating with Nimric, or were they? Nimric was not responsive in any way. Uh, they made the change that they made, and we all just had to live with it. That was that was the base level outcome. Wow. So we had to work around it. So our workaround for a while was we literally disabled any virus. Wow. Like, wow. <laughs> That's a 
that's scary. Yeah, that's just not responsible. Um, and so, so that's that's the background. So there was, and we did not charge for anywhere near the amount of time for any of the times and sites that we were dealing with this for. We ate, I bet we ate 50 or more hours anyway, chasing our upstream vendor down, communicating, it was just, it was a nightmare for everybody. So That's I should have was. come back with that report and I didn't well, now we apologize, have but wow. that is the background of that situation. So was, what, where uh, are we now? Update us. So Nimric we have an what? exception in place for the Nimric file folder. So um, Nimric still hasn't done anything. They're still no. They never did things. anything. They never. Wow. They never even picked up the phone. Very frustrating. Wow. And in, in with on this, a, they're running on a platform that is not supported by anybody. Yeah, and and in with this, not to sort of pile on with Nimric, but. Nimric lost their primary technician who was the, mm -hmm. the guy who most of you dealt with mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And he went to uh, Dominion. another company. Dominion. Yeah. Dominion. So to, I appreciate the explanation, wow. um, but it, it kind of takes us, in, I think, into another, another um, facet of what we need in tech support. Mm -hmm. So what you're describing, Ruben, there's there's nobody here, nobody in this group, and nobody in the town office team who is the, the, the hub for the tech yep. knowledge. Yep. You know, that's the first time you saw the reactions. That's the first time we've had that explanation and understood. Yes. Yep. And you're sitting here in a solo vacuum telling us that. There's mm -hmm. no one from, from Nembrook saying, well, hang on, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, but you can absolutely. The, the, you you, you can, understand my point, though. No, absolutely. It, right now, we you don't have to believe me. I, I totally well, understand we, where you're coming from, and we did a poor job, or uh, I did a poor job because I was actually asked for this report, and I didn't, I didn't give it back. So, so, um, but you are delivering the information, and you are the most knowledgeable person in the room, and that would be true even if the entire lineup of town. Employees yeah. were sitting yeah. here, you know, road crew mm -hmm. on, on, office staff around everybody. Yeah. So what we need is somebody who takes ownership mm -hmm. and takes it personally um, on behalf of the town. Yes. And and I think that's what what's one of the things that we were hoping to accomplish in in going for going out to bid is to have somebody who stands in the shoes of a town employee and takes it as personally as we have to on behalf of our of our town so 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 what are you doing as our partner um, mm -hmm. to help us understand uh, what our vulnerabilities are find better solutions um, maybe advise us on contracting around indemnification clauses. You know, this begs for an indemnification clause. It makes me want to say, well, where's our contract with Nemark? What's in that? You know, because this is, there's a lot of costs. And right now the town is bearing, and I understand you bore some of it, but so where are you and where's your head in that idea of being that? kind of a partner, not somebody that we contract who says, here's what my job is, but somebody who takes it as personally as we do and takes ownership on our behalf because we don't have the skills or the staff or the staff mm -hmm. or the time or, or any of it. I mean, yeah, it has to be a real partnership where, you know, people can understand what they're asked to do over a phone call or yep. when they come in the office. Um, I think I've heard that there's been improvements in, in the communication which we really appreciate. Um, but not just one at a time, not just troubleshooting. I'm talking about flipping yeah, it. Right, I didn't get to finish. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, front end. Yeah, you know, just to help us think ahead and yep. look back and help us to problem solve what we might run into in the future. You know, so it's not just everything that's words in a contract. You sure. know, it, it, you have to have that, but it has to feel like it's us right. working together, I yeah. guess. And you know you're our next door neighbor, and you smoke Pillier, so that you know that's important to us. Well, I, I mean the relationship is far more important than whether we're neighbors. I mean, 
yes, I appreciate that we're neighbors, and that's great. But um, so uh, it's a it's a good question, and it's um, it's directly related to um, how our company is structured. So um, I started this company almost 23 years ago. It was me, myself, and I in my basement. Um, and as we've grown, um, my skills have had to change from being a really good technician uh, to being somebody who can impart in my team that exactly what you are asking for, right? When it was just me, everybody had a relationship with me, and it, everything is personal to me. It's my name on the sign, it's you know all of those things. Uh, it's it's indirectly it's my reputation on the line. Every time one of my staff interacts with somebody uh, in a professional capacity, it is still intensely personal to me. It is intensely personal to me when somebody is unhappy with our work, um, and we go to the ends of the earth to make sure that when we make a mistake, because we're human and we're going to make mistakes. Um, that we make it right and that we fix it and that we do whatever it takes to ensure that the relationship is, is strong and intact at the end of that. Um, so I was specifically tasked by the select board to come back with a report and I totally spaced out. That is completely my, uh, I've sort of fallen on my sword, I'll stop falling on my sword about that now. But. Uh, but I do want to I do want to take ownership because um, because the technician that comes on site was not tasked with that, so he didn't report back. I'm less concerned about the report than um, I am about the fact that it happened to begin with, mm -hmm. and I'm not and I'm not hearing that there's even a better solution on the table than than so Nemrick. For this particular issue, there isn't a better solution. To be perfectly frank. Um, Nimric strikes a really good, like beating them up about using a Fox Pro database, which I'm not real fond of, and some of, you know, whatever. The bottom line is that their, their value proposition is impossible to beat in Vermont. Municipalities in Vermont use Nimric because they build a very good product. It meets the financial needs of the towns. It has the auditing and you know, all of those financial components that are really important at a price point that Vermont scale municipalities can pay. So, uh, you know, we, we can sort of, I have my opinions about the tech under the hood and, you know, if it was me, would I do something different? Maybe, but I'm also not in Nimric's shoes. I don't right. know exactly what's running under the hood there other than from, you know, from an right. infrastructure perspective. Um, and this is, this is a, a pretty common tension between the IT folks and the application delivery folks, right? The application delivery folks build their product the way that they build it, and the IT folks just have to sort of deal with it. And it happens all the time, you know, whether it's, you know, somebody says, well, you need, you're gonna roll out great planes and it's gonna be this great, you know, financial database, and oh, by the way, you need a 15 or $20,000 SQL server that was not part of the project because the application developers, that's not part of their thing. They just have a database and they bring it to the town and you license the product and then you go, oh, <laughs> I need this too. Um, so, I mean, we run into this pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. um, you guys aren't talking about making major changes. So that's, you know, if you were, then we would certainly encourage you to let us know when you were considering because we can ask those picky questions. Okay, what are the infrastructure requirements? Right. Well, that's why we would depend on somebody like you mm -hmm to help us with that because we don't know what Absolutely. we don't we don't know what we don't know correct right. and we don't know what we don't know and so so part of it is really building that partnership so one of the things that we do with most of our clients and interestingly our municipal clients um, frankly select boards i think have more interesting things to do than talk to the it folks but we're happy to do it um, is on an annual basis, we'll sit down with our sort of primary contact, um, and we've, we've actually gotten pretty formal about this, where we'll, on an annual basis, we do this sort of current state, desired state. We write out mm -hmm. where you are, That's where we, we envision you mm -hmm. going. That's exactly um, what we want. 
what the steps to sort of bridge that delta between the two are, um, and which of those steps are something that you should be doing in the next 12 months. So then you're talking about this year's budget, mm -hmm. and which of those things are things that are a little right. more fuzzy and farther out. We're actually doing that as a matter of course. For yeah, most of our customers, right. we would be more than delighted to do that for you. Right, because that really helps us, as you said, because, you know, like I said, I don't know what I don't know. And I don't know, you know, when we're planning budgets, like now we have this thing where we need a new server. Mm -hmm. We don't have the money budgeted for that because we didn't right. know. Right. So, so that's what we did. So we're trying really hard to get out of that stance of being the company that comes to our clients with the next multi-thousand dollar problem. So right. that's exactly what the driver is behind that annual sit down. Is so that we're actually mm -hmm. talking about 12, 24, 36 that's what we need. months. Um, to help so us plan. Right. Hey, do, we, do we have that now? So we need a new server, but do, is, do we have that five year window? I have a you current state desired state. We think. I don't know exactly how dusted off it is. To be honest, once you're through the server, then you're pretty close to done for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I, my recollection is that most of the workstations here are. We pretty just, bought, new. Them, right? we just bought some. Right. And, and, no, and, yeah, I sorry. think they're all new. Yeah, I mean, we have. There's one that's. Yeah, so we have the, a new one in the town garage. We have the public com laptop. I think. Did Judy? I think Judy got a new one. Holland would know. In fact, better. we just did we just a current did state desired yeah. state that yeah. I think we sent to Judy. Or maybe we just developed it. Yeah, um, it was developed, and, and the, the server is the last piece. Of and the, the server is the last piece. Right. Okay. Because this is all sounding very Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just like, really got some new computers in the, like, the last um, month. So this year has been a rough one, right? Because you had a, well, <coughs> frankly, because the Windows 7 thing came up and said, right. I don't care how old the machine is, the machine's got to go. Um, and creeps. I mean, you could spend some money on doing in-place upgrades mm -hmm. on the machines, but then you know, you've spent some money on an aging machine, so right. the return on that investment is not great. And that's foreseeable, um, right? How do we... Uh, we started sending notices out about that last year. And uh, it's, been, it's been a year. And it, and it might be helpful for, 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 for you, because we don't know what you know. Mm -hmm. And planning, helping us plan, it might be right. good for you to initiate Gee, you know, Cal Select Board is really interested in this. Yep. Let me initiate a meeting. So uh, that yeah. I mean, I'm you know, I'll kind of put it back on you guys because we don't know when. I will cheerfully come and sit down with the Select Board once a year. And I would say it actually the current state, desired state. I, I want to say that's a great than, idea. Than Denise too. I would say, speaking for myself, I am not at all interested in this. No. And therefore, I, I Ruben, have to go force myself on that agenda and sit down and make them listen to me and understand what they need to do. Because that is okay. my job no, and I take it that personally. Yep. Well, I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah. Right. You said you find it really interesting though. Oh well, I'm just, <laughs> just being nice. I'm, just being nice. I mean, I'm interested in I'm interested in what we need to do overall and the and the price. You're interested right. in financial impact on the town, right? Which right. at That's, the end of the day, at the right time of year, too. That part right. I'm <laughs> and then making sure right. that the staff has what they need to do their yep. jobs. That's my big interest. How you, of course, all the other stuff that we're, we're not, not interested, that we, don't, that we don't care about. Like <laughs> October would be a great month for the update. So we're we've no, actually I would say got summer. Customers. Even summer. I would say yeah. even yeah. I would say late oh, summer. Okay. There we go. August, we, we September. We typically time this at contract renewal, but we have customers for whom we do it yeah. several months before the contract renewal because that's when they're doing their budget. Yeah. See, we're doing budget I now. Be, I'd be happy to do that. So if you could put that on your very yeah. probably very long list of things to do, which is probably as long as ours. On the calendar. Yeah. Um, that would be really helpful we, to We have really good that. automated tools that save us from ourselves. Yes, save our old brains. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we definitely want to kind of develop a IT capital plan. We want to know yep. how long are these things good for, a server yeah. is good for, a desktop is good yep. for, yep. a laptop is good for. Right. What are the vulnerabilities? How much is the next surprise going to cost right, us? Right, right, right. Well, and then we what have we'd like to do is have there be few to no surprises. Yeah, that would that be nice. That way everything is, everything that comes along 
you've already planned for, right? I mean, at right. the end of the day, we're, we're trying really hard to get out of the surprise world yeah, we and like be really it. proactive. Like, mm -hmm. it's everything to do with our service has been proactive. That's why we do the preventative maintenance checks and all of the network health checks that we do to, is to make sure that we're not waiting for something to go wrong, but mm -hmm. we're actually anticipating it. And then the logical outgrowth of that is to help with the multi-year budgeting and, and that sort of more strategic planning from an IT perspective. And our auditors in there, and I'll have to, I'll send you an email when I find it. I know where, I, it's somewhere I know where it is. They recommended a couple of different policies, and some of them are directly related to computer stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, do, you, do you have like draft or template policies? We have model policies that model we can policies. send for like acceptable use and those sorts of things. Yeah, something, there was one about, um, had to do with computer fraud or, um, there's also something where. Um, Plainfield CT has model policies. Yeah, I'm on, the, I'm on the board at the health center in Plainfield and we just learned the other night that the health center has, and maybe our stuff is too small, but maybe not, where they send out these emails and try to, not, do you know what I mean? To see yeah. if people yeah. answer the email when it's suspicious, suspicious well, emails, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever that's called. They're, yeah, the I, they're the sending IT phishing team. emails right. yeah. the emails. to see what Do you do that to through. your customers? Um, or is that something? We can, but we typically don't. We we're happy to do user education. We have services that we can use that will send those sorts of test right. emails, and if they don't give those services away, um, they're, they're yeah. pretty proud of them. Um, and frankly, some some you know a couple hours of user training goes a really long mm -hmm. way. That might be really and it may be good more to have. valuable mm -hmm. than right. this is just setting true. people up for failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't the personally, mm -hmm. I would prefer to sort of Education. go, you know, here's, so we've got yeah. Dave Porcello is, is our resident security expert. Mm -hmm. He's the guy who started Pony Express up in Burlington. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, like, you know, incredible security guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he, we do security training. So maybe stops. we could put that on our list. I mean, I'm not, I'm not interested in, and that you know, with the contract. putting anybody up for failure. But I am interested in making sure that staff, and you know, the health center has like a hundred right. staff members, so that's a way for them to, to do that. But here, there's only, you know, a handful. So the health center, it's, that's a way for them to gauge their risk. Right. Um, and then they can sort of identify which users they might want to. Right. And then, they, and then when they have that, and then somebody, you know, mistakenly, then they do some training. And they do training anyways, but yeah. then they do this extra training. It's a training. little more directed for the right. folks who fell for it. And, yeah. and then some, I think the auditor's report said something about cybersecurity. Yep. Yeah. So I'm interested in, we have to come up with a, the, the town has to come up with some kind of a policy. I'll look and see what they, the ones they recommended that, you know, maybe you have templates for, or the LCT does. I would start with the league, yeah. um, because I'm fairly certain that they have model policies for just about everything. Yeah, they have um, a lot of them. And that's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, we have model policies that are a little more geared toward commercial, and you guys have different requirements around open meeting law and retention and some mm -hmm. of that right, stuff. Right. So I would want to make sure that we didn't steer you toward a policy that was more uh, commercial. commercial in nature yeah. and missed something mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. for you. Um, we could take the leak policy and look at our commercial policy and see if there's um, areas to see if there's I think that would be helpful actually yeah. I would really I what I've been wondering about is sending just is sending the audit report it's public anyway mm -hmm. to Ruben as part of the team and and you can come back to us and say here's the VLCT policy that's a good fit yeah. I found three I don't, think he, I don't know if you want the whole audit Ruben because it's pretty long but it's I can a, pull out yeah the right section pull out the right, right sections where they recommended these different things well so and if there and if the VLCT policy is a good fit for us you can recommend it or you can say there's three tweaks you should make and you know that's a yeah, that's the kind of help that would be really that's helpful. The, that's yeah. the taking the so ownership. So the challenge for us is that I, I also want to be really mindful about how much time and your money we expend on things. So um, 
I'm happy to do anything that you ask for. Mm -hmm. um, but if, but if the league has a like fully baked policy, then mm -hmm. I would. It's probably pretty good. Say you probably correct. don't want to pay yeah. us to to review it a lot because they've already vetted it out, yeah. and I find it unlikely. To be honest, I, the league is great. And I, I find it unlikely that we'll do a better job for you. Um, and the and the and, league is and geared and towards gonna, municipalities, right? Correct. As long as we're in a, as long as we're yeah. comfortable. What I'm looking for I is I might just ask you to read it. I I would be delighted to read it. Right. I, you know, right. I'm just I want to be careful about. <clears throat> I don't want to run the clock doing something that may have low value for you, mm -hmm. right? And you know, I spin through a document in 15 minutes, and I, I'm not going to charge you for that. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, but. Um, so, and then I guess just to back up, because John, I heard you ask if that was included in the contract. The annual. So, so that's that's a good question. Um, I thought I saw it in something. So we do a couple of things in our contracts. You can have us change light bulbs as part of the contract. Probably <laughs> okay. not the best use of it. <laughs> um, yes. But we have we have purposefully we we don't do an all you can eat contract. Um, because when you provide a buffet plan like that, you have to be very prescriptive about what services are included. And inevitably, what, what I have found in the many years that I've been in this business is that people end up not calling because they always feel like what they're asking is somehow outside of the contract and results in overages. So I, I don't like that paradigm. I, at the end of the day, I feel very strongly that those contracts send a, set a relationship up that they're, you're betting against each other. I, if I'm providing a contract like that, then I'm betting that you're going to consume less than it costs me to deliver the service. And you're betting that you're getting enough value out of that contract to make it worth having it. And I don't like the dynamic yeah. that sets up. I'm actually very uncomfortable with it. I've yeah. never provided those sort of contracts because uh, because it's not a partnership at that point. So what we do is we offer block time um, and we sort of carve an hour aside in a month to do a network health check and that proactive stuff. You can override it, it's your time. Um, and you know what, we've got an extra day right, this month. Right. We'd really okay. like you to just bag the network health check this month and we'll do it next month because we need a couple, we need an extra hour of desktop support and we don't want to have an overage. So you'll notice that our contract is a little vague in terms of what yeah. exactly is included for services. There's not like a checkbox that says we will do yeah, these yeah. things because I want a, the time is really the thing that you're paying us for. And I want to make sure that if you ask us to review a, a model policy and it takes you know, 15 or 20 minutes that we don't go, well, that's going to be an overage. Um, and you know, then Sandra's got to get an overage approved and come to the slide. Yeah, it becomes a thing. Um, so, uh, or or you just get bills at the end of the month and you're like, why do we keep getting these overages? This is not cool. Um, so, so that's my soliloquy on on how we structure and why we structure our contracts the way that we do. Makes sense. You, did you, I mean, you're our tech guy. Um, staying, keeping in mind sensitivity of the proprietary nature of things you do and how you run your business, maybe you could uh, share in terms that you're comfortable uh, sharing with the select board the differences between the perception agreement that we're currently under versus the one that you've presented to us. Um, the contract language is the only thing that's changed because we finally dusted off the, the frankly clunky language in the old contract. The the delivery is precisely the same. Okay, perfect. The the only thing that that is in the proposal that is not being done currently mm -hmm. is the backup service. Right. The, but that's a separate uh, piece of the agreement anyway. Exactly. Do we, is the backup in the 
contract? It's in the proposal. It, yeah, there, there's, there's a folder there's in there. Because we want backup, don't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you, you have backups. Oh. It's just whether you want to send your data to our portal. No, we, absolutely, you have backups, and we've tested them. And okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, backup backups back up. is something that we, <laughs> speaking yeah. of something ransomware new. and all of that, right? Backups is a real focus. You have to have good backups. Okay. That's one of the things that we check when we do our monthly health checks. Why, why is cloud backup so pricey? I, mean, I, I compare it in my simple mind um, to buying a four terabyte remote hard drive, and I look at the price of that, you know, 100 bucks now, to what the cloud service, and I understand you can access it anywhere Remotely. on the planet and, and Mars, but Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like, wow, it's, it's really pricey. For, so for, for one, we don't have just a regular four terabit hard drive sitting at the office for all of our customers. There's a really expensive set of gear that's running there. Um, you're your, your own, own cloud? We're our own, we're our own cloud for okay. the theme backups. Oh, okay. And we do that, again, um, because if you send your cloud backups off to a data center somewhere and you have a catastrophic failure and you need your data back, you have at minimum a 24-hour lag. Usually it's more like 48 because you've got to get somebody somewhere to go get your data. They have to write it to a drive, like the four terabit hard drive, and then they have to stick it on a FedEx truck. So there's at least an overnight delay to get that data once it's put on a hard drive to you, mm -hmm. and, right? It has to be put on in a usable form and then it has to be right. shipped to you. We keep it in our system in a usable form so that we can literally restore from that to a new piece of gear in our building. So, you have so we have proximity to the data, it's right there. We have redundancy on all the things. We pay for absurd internet connections. We pay for all of the bits and pieces. We have backup power generator, all of those things. It's like, it's not a data center. I'm not going to glorify this. <laughs> um, but for our scale, we've invested serious money um, into this service. And we've done it again in a way that's maybe not the norm. Um, because we've done the math and the value proposition and we've experienced the pain of some of these other methodologies and decided that this was a better way to go. Um, so that's that's why we offer the, the service that we offer. I bet a, a lot of customers may not even know that, which is a really good selling point. Um, that yeah, we have know. the data in our building? Yeah, we didn't know that. So I thought you were charging us a pass through. That it was just going. I'm not a go. huge fan of pass throughs. Me either. You know, I, particularly when all you got to do is hit the button. If we're adding some so. sort of value, I right. guess, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, uh, it's not how I usually do things. I mean, that's a really important point for people to know that that's what you do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I clearly think is much more clearly called out in the proposals than it is. Yeah, I mean, so you know, and essentially we could, essentially we could get stuff restored in a matter of hours as opposed to a couple of days. Correct. So the the slowest, and you guys have a pretty small scale server here. This is not like a serious crazy piece of hardware. So mm -hmm. we could restore, you know, if your image is on our server, we could restore it to another server in a matter. Right. Theoretically. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's and that's and that's you know. without going too far down the rabbit hole of backups. There's you know there's a recovery point, which is how far back in time can you go right. if the worst happens. There's the recovery time, which is how long can it take for that restore process to get you back up and running. Um, and then the last piece is the data retrieval, data archiving. How far back in time do you need to be able to go if something gets inadvertently deleted? Mm -hmm. So those are all things. <coughs> those are things that we talk about, like in our annual reviews. <laughs> we just check in on those mm -hmm. on those metrics and make sure that we're all. So it's on like the an same annual page. physical. Um, it's it's like an annual discussion of your physical results. Yeah. 
here's what we found, here are the things that we're doing, here's yeah. here's what you should be thinking about. And you're likely to need a bypass going forward. <laughs> yeah. Or a stent. Start saving your money. Or a stent at least. <laughs> and I need some heart surgery about every four years, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's unfortunately, that's the... Um, I think the other thing, and I, I don't want to drill down into all the details here with the select board, but you had mentioned in the email to Sandra regarding the server that you wanted to meet to discuss ways that maybe we could save some money. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely would like to have that discussion. Yep. Um, I think Sandra and Judy are feeling a little nervous because it might get, you know, they're thinking oh, it's going to be too technical for us to be able mm -hmm. to make decisions sure. but really I mean I'm happy to sit in on that okay. discussion and then we can bring a number to the select board and, yep. you know hopefully I can rep it properly mm -hmm. and explain everything to sure. everybody um, but we would definitely like to have that meeting as well um, we have the quote on the server right we have the quote mm -hmm. on the server it's it's in that secure area of our shared folder. Yeah. So everyone's welcome to take a look at it if you haven't already. Um, I think those are the main points. The other part of it would be maybe in the discussion with Sandra and Judy uh, to needle out some numbers so we can have an informed budget. For the, yeah, because the replacement, yes. is this? Mm-hmm. Is this the right is this the figure we're looking at? Mm -hmm. Eighteen thousand, well, almost nineteen thousand dollar cost. We don't have that. I hear you. I know I was making this quote up and I was doing my time estimates and I was like willing it to stop climbing. <laughs> um, the so I guess one piece just to sort of put out there quickly as I've been in this business for longer and longer, I've gotten more and more sensitive to not meeting an expectation, which means that if I give a number, I'm real sure about that number, that we're not gonna go over it. Um, and my, our experience in our quoting for the last couple of years has borne that out. We are consistently, consistently under budget when we do these jobs. I would much rather have the difficult conversation right now and mm -hmm. say it's going to be more money than you want it to be and have that out um, and then come in and beat the numbers that we sent mm -hmm. than yeah. to give you an artificially low number and then have to have a follow-up conversation where I'm explaining why my estimating was too low. So, yeah, because I mean we did, you know, we did think about starting a technology fund, which we did. Mm -hmm. But there obviously isn't enough money in there. We just right. use that fund to buy the, the, the fund. computers. To get the workstations right so, because that came up on you. And you right. right. So then this is where we need enough. your help yep. to plan to plan better for the expenses. What's the expense and of getting the land records digitized? The digitized land records. Yeah, we just did that. And uh, I mean to be oversimplified about it this is not a super complex network mm -hmm. so you know there's there's only there aren't that many capital pieces in it so you know if you mm -hmm. really oversimplify you say everything that's here is going to last four years so you take your four years add them all together divide by four yeah that's pretty yeah that's pretty easy <laughs> and, to do and that's kind of what that's that should be and expecting that prices are going to go up on expect that we're up, it's going to go up a little bit but it doesn't go up 50 percent over yeah. four right. years right, right? it's, it's been holding you know, steady technology no it goes up yeah. three times in one year the Nemeric. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah the Nemeric one five that's a service dollars. yeah oh, that's rough yeah and you know, as you heard us talking about taxes and stuff, you know, we're in a we're in a tough spot. Yeah, the pressure is there. Yeah, totally understand. That. Um, so, so there's, no, there I don't is know some there's... money to find. It's not huge money. I'm just going to be honest. Like, there's not thousands of dollars here. There's you know, money to find for. That, in terms of like sort of value engineering, some of the stuff mm -hmm. in here, um, there's you know, there's you. not huge money to mm -hmm. to squeeze out of this. And um, can we? Is there a way to budget out a certain amount over a 
couple of years to pay for what we need? Uh, the server job, the short answer is no. You really have to do it all at once. Um, and we've wasted the time. We're, I wasted it's the wrong word, but we don't have a, that window to do it in two years. Is that what I'm hearing? Or at least I would the, at not least recommend. Cost. I believe the server is close to five years old now. Yeah. So, so what, what year worry five about? is where the risk of some sort of a failure so you're worried, starts. You were worried about mechanical failure. That's what's going on. So here's my. Um, and they're, they're not solid state. Any these things are still. No, and solid drives. state drives don't even warn you when they go. They just. Yeah. So, okay. so my philosophy about hardware is the warranty on most of this gear is three years. Most of our competitors, the sky is falling at day 366 on year three. I've been in this business for a long time, and, and my experience is that if it's run reliably for three years, it is almost certainly going to run reliably for a fourth. Year five is where the actual risk for some sort of a serious failure in the equipment starts to tick up pretty sharply. So, you know, it's like one of those graduated curves. You don't want to be over here where it's not a matter of if, but when something really breaks. Right. You, you want to like, ride it just a little bit and yeah. then you want to get yeah. off of that ride before you have an expensive cleanup so with that and you're heading into year five now okay is there any way to finance the cost through um you, you can uh, we don't finance but we'll cheerfully hook you up with um and and we don't have a broker relationship with okay. anybody either but north star leasing does leasing and you know you can buy money from them I, mm -hmm. and actually from a capital expenditure cash flow perspective. It took me a really long time to take my own advice. Um, but leasing is awesome. It takes all of the cash flow headache away. Mm -hmm. You do a three year lease with a dollar buyout at the end. The gear is yours. You don't have to turn it in. It's just mm -hmm. done. Um, and you and, said that was North Star? Uh, yeah, North Star, Star Leasing is a very well known Vermont company. Um, you got that for the minutes, Katie, right? And if you're clever, then you make your lease payments in year four. And then you've stocked up some cash for oh, the right. labor to do whatever the next right. capital expense is. Right. Good. Um, and now you're starting to do it. So then, you know, that'll intersect with your actual capital planning. Right. And that's so what that we need to do. The surprises basically are just, you're not in mm -hmm. the surprise handling business anymore. And part of your annual checkup with us would be looking at capital planning, I would think. Right. Uh, again, you know, right. you've got this many machines. We replaced two of them this year. You've got three more to replace next year. Right. Servers in year two, you should be planning on mm -hmm. X dollars, you know, two years from now. So this quote that you gave us for $18,000, that's, we're in, did I understand you correctly, we're in year five right now of needing I believe of this you're, server. you're sort of on the tail end of year mm -hmm. four. So... so would this be, we would be looking at this cost coming out of our current budget then? Uh, honestly. Or I, would we wait until FY? I think July you could one. make it to June. To the end July. of June. July 1. At least we'd have a little bit of. Uh, I'll, I'll double check with Holland. But okay. my recollection of the conversation that I had with him is that you okay. could make it to June and get into the next budget year. And that, okay. that would, that's good that to know. That would probably be okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, again, it, we're playing the risk game a little bit, um, but I, uh, the server is not exhibiting signs of impending doom. Um, so you know, if if it was showing, <laughs> um, so uh, and they're not solid state drives, which when they fail, they just they're done. Um, so they start making noise or bearing. You see weird things happening. Yeah. So it starts to it. get a little slow. You know, you start to hear a whiny sound come okay. out of the drive. Mm -hmm. okay. Not always. Yep. There's often there's like little warning signs in the logs, which mm -hmm. we review on a monthly basis. So we, sh you know, if it if it gives us warning, <laughs> um, you'll let us know. And, and even still, there's a disk that you can recover from, right? As solid state, you can't. Well, we have backups. Yeah, that's, oh, that's right. That's right. Backups. That's, right. that's right. Backups, backups, backups. We love backups. So we don't only lose a day's worth of stuff. How often do we back up? Well, I and I, if I'm not mistaken, we back up I, at like two I, in the morning or something. Every day. I'm fairly yeah. sure that this drive is mirrored, so you actually have two. 
But you back it up every night or something, yes. right? Yeah, it's every night. Mm -hmm. oh, so, so what's the risk? Right. You wait till it it's only out. a risk if it's one of the hard drives that breaks and not like the RAM or a power supply. Yeah. Or, yeah. Right. Like, that's, that's not the only moving piece in the machine, unfortunately. So, yeah. you know, the hard drive is, is the most common piece, right. which is why we always put right. in redundant ones and we, um, the proposal includes redundant drives and we yeah, may right. be able to trim that redundancy down a bit. Um, at the cost of some performance and extra, you know, red on those again. But it's good to know that we could wait till July 1st. You know, maybe we say, okay, we're going to do it July 1st so that you can start doing whatever yeah, you need to do. Let's definitely um, verify that with Holland and then... Um, and we'll go to North Star Fireworks and get a server. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> North Star Fireworks. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 We, won't, we won't get a, a <laughs> server. We'll sell the uh, uh, Rally Rider truck. <laughs> let's get some right. fireworks. <laughs> <and a server. laughs> We will sell you the pyrotechnics to blow up the old one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the desire, but... <laughs> Is there anything okay. else to look for? So I just want to make sure that I have my to-do list. So I'm going to... Um, what do you want me to do? Uh, all right. Sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. I was reading back through my notes. So do you, if, if you would like to do some user training, we would be glad to do that. And that would be you something. You mean the that, cyber? Yeah, if, if that makes sense. If you want to, um, I just want to make sure that I like have my mm -hmm. bulleted list of things. I mean, I think I it would be good to do. see about that. And it would be good for the road commissioner so to. I'd like to go. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to go when you're, when you're going to do it. Yeah. If you make it during the. They would, you know, board members would probably attend as well. I mean, I look at home. I don't open anything that it looks the least bit. And sometimes I delete stuff, and people say, "Did you get my emails?" Like, no, I thought it was. Hey, sorry, it's gone. But they can resend it. Right. That's right. the magic about right. email is that yeah. it's right. Right. They're right. trying to get you back on your heels so that you open something that you shouldn't, and there's no reason. Every like the, my, right. like the SharePoint right. telling me that I'm at my maximum. Yeah, yeah, I get that right. all the time. Do you get that? And, I, the, and I was and pondering I it, think and I realized, that. That, oh, shh, delete. Yeah. Yeah. They'll the let me know if, if I really they, have a problem. Yeah. Right. Or the Capital One Chase fraud alerts oh, that yeah, come yeah, in yeah. with misspellings <laughs> or, you know, all of those yeah. things. And I was look at the, I always look at the email address. Yeah, I look at the address. Is right. it sometimes the email address are... Right. I, don't get a, I don't get a lot, but that fair no. point one... I, I almost. I almost did, but what I realized is it didn't, it wasn't pretty, it didn't have a logo, it was weird. Yeah. Yeah. I and I've gotten, one, I've gotten ones that look almost real. Yeah. Where they tell you yeah, you're, you're, at, you're at your real. limit. Mm -hmm. yeah, is that the one you get? Where you're at your limit. We need to yeah. change your password. Yeah. Yeah, if don't fall for those. Yeah. Right. So uh, we're we're yeah. very fond of the phrase a healthy dose of paranoia. Mm -hmm. Just you know, <laughs> just be a little. You don't have to like tinfoil hat it, but just a little. Yeah. A little paranoid is good. A little paranoia goes a long way. Next time you see Greg, remind him about that. <laughs> Does he open all the weird emails? He is the biggest cream puff there is. You need to lock him out. Yeah, I'll change the I don't. I don't let my husband have me. He's bad. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be able to figure it. The old uh, Dilbert cartoon where the <coughs> the boss has his etch a sketch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's trying to remember how to. And Dilbert says. Remember you? Remember what I taught you? <laughs> you shake it up like down, and, <laughs> and then it goes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yep. Anything else? Okay. So user training. Yeah. We'll reach out, um, and I will reach out. Um, I'll coordinate with you. Okay. And then I can give um, Sandra and Judy a heads up that yeah. we're gonna have another meeting. Um, did you want to attend that? You can let me know what it is. I'm more interested in the training. Okay. Um, Find out the age of the server to make sure it's at the end of, it's just beginning age five. <coughs> we can go to July one. Yeah. Server. 
report back to you. Denise. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else on our those, list? Are, those, are the, those are the main ones that I have, too. Okay. okay. Anybody else have anything? I have noted, you, that, I noted that you talked about planning a date in the summer for there to be the year the annual physical. Right. Uh, Katie, do you have any, I mean, you had one of the town's computers and you mm -hmm. had an issue and they helped you out. I yep, mean, it was you resolved can, quickly you, and easily. You can be part of this conversation if you have any thoughts or questions because you're. I would want, ho you. hopefully, I, you know, you might be able to attend the training, too. Uh, yeah. Everything went great with my computer getting um, its brains increased. Okay. Had brain surgery. Yes. yes. If, only, if only I could have my then brains it increased. Then it went very well. <laughs> if you find out how to do that, let me know. No, they're heading the other way, unfortunately. Don't okay. say so that. So we will um, set a time in the summer to sit down do and, two, and sort of and go over up. this. Yep. That would be really helpful. Yeah. We would be glad to do that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and then so the only other thing is just that extended discussion about um, when we meet to discuss the the server option. Um, any other considerations that we should factor in for our budget members? Mm -hmm. uh, my recollection is that you guys are having a tough year. Like everything sort of came mm -hmm. to bear yeah. in this one year, and it sounds like externalities. Yeah externalities to us obviously not to you <laughs> right but, uh, in terms of our service came to bear at the same time yeah. so there was like a, a stack up of expenses mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, yeah I, I totally understand that that's that's a tough place to be yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the money is not growing on trees no it's not so um, well Thank you all. Well, thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. This, this, thank thank you. this was thank really you. an answer to our questions and all that. Thank you very much. Glad to do it. Yeah, great yeah. job. Thanks. Good. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And I will follow up this time. Okay. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. No, I, my father is fond. As a young man, he was fond of telling me that nobody's perfect and you're a perfect example. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Dad. Uh, 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 I hear those words uh, frequently. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> very, very good grounding, humbling. Yes, it is. <laughs> and at least you came out of a night when it wasn't snowing. And really true. So there you have it. It's out of character for us to do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good night, everybody. Thanks again. Thank you. Good night, Good night all. Thank you. Take care. Um, Thank you, Claire. Okay. Did you report? Um, what is this next thing? The resolution. You, want, you had something else you wanted to say? Say you want to resolution. That's a Beatles song. About cannabis. Okay, I got this in the mail, email, and I think you got it too, right? From BLCT about this cannabis resolution. It relates to Senate Bill number 54, which I didn't go in and read S54. But it is within the folder, and VLCT is asking all of its member towns to read the resolution and asking us to sign off on it. It's basically dealing with that Dillon's Law problem where without the legislature's approval, we can't yeah. set, make an assessment. Mm -hmm. So they could approve the sale of retailing of cannabis in our towns, and state derives all its revenue. We don't have any say in the matter. They impose it on our towns. So, it's kind of so what, I just, what, I was going to put it on the agenda, and John asked me to put it on. So, what is your pleasure? Did you review the resolution? I read it quickly. It's a huge research project to understand it, and to you know what its implications are, what the backdrop is. But you know, going back to the conversation we had with Ruben just a few minutes ago, I think we pay. We're members of VLCT. They do excellent work, and mm -hmm. and we. We need to let go and, and support them and let them do it for us. Yeah, they don't they don't ask a lot of no, us. No. They don't ask us to do a lot of things like this. So when they do, I take them at their word. Yep. I know Gwen, I know Karen Horn, and they do very good work for towns. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, I can say that I did read this, but there was also at least two articles that I found online talking about it in a couple of different publications across the state. And the general consensus is, is that what the BLCT is proposing makes sense. Well, it gives us the opportunity. Especially for smaller towns. Right, it gives us the opportunity if we have something like this in our town, that we can gain some tax revenues from it. And you know, BLCT is all about towns, you know, managing themselves basically, mm -hmm. working through legislature. Yeah, doing great advocates. So I did read it. Um, I'm sure they'll keep us updated as the bill goes through the legislature. So if you'd like us to be a part of the resolution, I'll need a motion. Make a motion and edit this to a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, second. Oh, second. We're not, we're not second. Well, the only thing is, you know, as one stuff to remember, I, I, and as a person who consumes marijuana probably twice a year, um, if I'm lucky, um, I have no problem with marijuana. I have a huge problem with the legalization of marijuana. So, I, it, to me, it, it appears that it seems like item one or two is where I find pro problematic from my st personal point standpoint. Well, we can always change the resolution. Um, the t that the town only supports legal legislation legalizing a tax and regulated cannabis market that adequately addresses all the aforementioned. Uh, I'd rather have it say in the event that the state, that without supporting the legalization, mm -hmm. if, if and when it were to happen against our our best, whatever. We can put Without, some words in there. You know, I don't want us to, I, I don't want us to be, I would like us not to be, my opinion, not to pressure anyone. I would like us to not be supporting the legalization of commercial marijuana. But my concern is, to be quite honest, is every time we have a, a large cash cow, like let's just say IBM, they're not here anymore. Um, they run that legislature, they get special IBM got special rates on their electricity that we all paid for. Tax, IBM tax almost rates. got a highway put through that we were going to pay for. IBM got this, uh, or their the current owner who's now sold again, I think, mm -hmm. they just um, got somewhere. a two three million dollar tax subsidy um, because they're going to keep them from leaving, and then they left. But um, so this is what happens. My concern is what will happen. They, if they legalize this, because it's what they've done in every other state, they then say, well, it's a drug and it's bad, you know, any alcohol, all drugs. So it's, and you know, we, we're concerned about addiction and children. So we're gonna have this fund our education. And we're in a situation right now where schools are pretty darn expensive given the level of student, oh. the student population. The per capita is pretty high, so we get hooked I'm not worried about people getting hooked on marijuana. I'm worried about us getting hooked as taxpayers, as legislators, as governors, hooked on this revenue stream. Mm -hmm. And then the other shoe to drop. This is what and is was, already happening in Colorado. It's in the press right now. And I knew this was going to happen. And I said, everybody, you watch. Um, they're going to complain about the illicit market undermining them. So they used to say, if we legalize it, it will drop the value. It will get rid of the, the mob or the illicit people selling outside of a system where it's tested and everything. Well, it turns out now their, their complaint is we cannot sell it as cheap as the illicit market. Well, why don't you tell us that in the first place? So now they're more expensive. And so now you need to shut down the illicit market. Right now, with it not being legal, if someone grew 10 plants in their garden and someone Sharon called the state police saying, my neighbor's got 10 plants. They'd say, you know, call someone who cares. We're too busy. <laughs> not so not that, but if they, what the state police from Colorado already came to our legislature a couple of years ago and said they would recommend is that you dedicate a portion of those, the revenues from this to creating a special t police task force so we can then go and basically raid everyone's gardens which is something they're not interested in now. So I worry about this increasing police presence. I, I am so, so against it. And we're, and we're not gonna be able to get rid of this once we get it. So where would it's you, like, 
Did you want to make a change? Well, I would like it to be clear that it doesn't say that. When are they looking for a signature? Um, if you want it, I mean, we can always put it on the next agenda. Do we have word version? <clears throat> I don't know if we do or not. But do we have on PDF we software? Have, um, we can get it. We don't have to fix the PDF to Word, right? We have a word version. Then yeah. let's let John do a strike. Okay, I'll yes. do that. Yeah, do that. We'll okay. just put it on the next agenda. That'd be great. You okay. Just go into the folder and download it as a word document because it's in there as a word document. So you oh. download it to your okay. local okay. drive as well. So okay. I'll put it in the. I will do that. Okay. On the twelve nine agenda yeah. pile, it's already yeah. getting big. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my I, I support passing a version of this because mm -hmm. I, I hate that Dylan's law. I think it's awful and. Uh, I think if they're going to impose this on us and legalize commercial retail, retailing of marijuana, marijuana products, derived products, then mm -hmm. we should be able to derive a tax benefit. Well, and you know, some other towns income, yeah. may, I mean, I can email back when we get our version done, I can email it back to the LCT and there might be other towns that feel the same way. Yeah. I, like the, I like the idea of taking what you're, what you're describing is let's take the politics out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to have, I would say, we don't have to have an opinion. Let, can, and I'm going to ask you, yeah. right? So you don't have an opinion yeah. about what does or without does. supporting or opposing. Right. 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 Just, just if, just if this facts. is going to happen, the, this is what that's, we, this is what we right. need. Keep it to one page. Yeah. If you and then if we all look at it ahead of time on that Monday night, we don't have to spend a lot of time right. on it. Mm -hmm. This is point to get a full agenda. Yeah. And just so you know, if, if I'm at the state house and then I'm ever queried about this, I, I strongly oppose commercial retail marijuana sale. But but if you write something, but I support that's, people smoking marijuana. But if you <laughs> but if you write that. something that's neutral, it doesn't have an opinion right. about it, then that's it's right. fine. That's right. That's and other towns may that. want to adopt ours version yeah. as well. It's happened before. Yes, it has. It's <laughs> happened several times before. We we do a pretty good job of that. So do you have to withdraw the motion? Yes. Wasn't yeah, it wasn't seconded. Seconded. We I didn't understand vote. what the motion even was. And okay. it wasn't seconded. To, to it wasn't bless that policy. Right. right. But it, right. Wasn't, it wasn't seconded. Yeah. No. Okay. So you're, you didn't get a second. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your support. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, draft budget. So last week I sat down, I came in on Thursday and sat down with Sandra and Judy and Barbara. And we kind of went over what you see in your binder tonight when you get the orange. Yeah. And you know, a lot of these things, we don't have a lot of control over. The cost of the audit, the cost of a server, the, you know, some of the, the dues that we have to pay, so on and so forth. Um, I've also been working on a draft warning. I think I, did I send it around? Did I did warn? see it. I didn't okay. read it, but I saw it. Mm -hmm. It's very, very draft, and I've been talking with, I talked with the Conservation Commission, Planning Commission, and listers about what they need or would like to see in their budget. That doesn't mean we have to grant what they ask for, but this is their, their wish list. Um, Conservation Commission is going to come up with some language um, to kind of go backwards a little bit to really clarify what the Conservation Fund if you look at the language in 1989 in, in the warning, whoever did the initial guidelines, which was from the current Conservation Commission, but previous Conservation Commissions, probably didn't really go back and look at the warned language and came up with these guidelines. So anyways, we're gonna have to do that. Um, but that's so, just policy, that's not a right. money, yeah. So, you know, we're scheduled to meet on December 14th and January 11th, I think it is, to do a budget retreat kind of thing. December so, 14th. That's a Saturday, right? That's mm -hmm. what we said. Okay. okay. So my thought is, um, I don't know how wedded to wanting to meet on December 14th, everybody is. In working with Sandra and Judy and stuff like that on expenses, um, you know, she's investigated, for instance, we found out Nemrex going up quite significantly. Um, the charge for Cynthia to do the monthly audit, that's really not going to change much. So if you look at these pages and you look at the orange, <coughs> which looks more peach to me, but 
those are the what Sandra and Judy and I talked about last week. Um, and you'll see the notations where we haven't put in some figures. So we take a minute to just to look at that. <clears throat> if we can come up with these and we can review the budget changes at a regular select board meeting, there may not be a need to have a meeting on a Saturday, is what I'm getting at. The time is up. Not, not anything. I think it's too early to decide not to. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, today's yeah. the 25th. These are in the folder. We can look at them online. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think so. Don't. But we can take this with us? <coughs> no, we're not supposed to stay with us either. Well, they, they would prefer you not, but I've taken mine home because I can't digest it all. I'm not going to sit here and digest it. Is that, I'm, I'm trying right. to be no. clear on that. No, 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 no. We can't sit here and digest it. But my goal is that if people take and they really look at this, we have questions. Let's put the questions out there to Sandra or Judy or whoever can answer them. Um, and you can look at the Planning Commission piece, the Lister piece, the Conservation Commission piece, and pretty much those are figures that those groups have given me that we've plopped in here. And like I said, it doesn't mean we can't change them. Right. Because <coughs> I'm just trying to see, I'm just trying to find a way to better use time. So can we take our binders? I'll please? just tell them that you're going to take them home and they can just give you, like tonight, my copy of this was waiting here. Right. There we go. That's a good plan. So that's what I'm doing so that I can look at it. Right. Yeah. Okay, that works. Does that work? Yeah. Um, and then maybe we can cut down on the, you know, extra time we have to spend meeting. Or maybe the meeting will go fast. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to make a really good use right. of our everybody's time. Should, really I, ask, should I ask Sandra about an uh, online location? Because I know you discussed with her PDFs going in, but not in a public location. Don't she said when she was here that you have a live spreadsheet. I don't think it, I don't think she was referring to this. Okay. <coughs> we can ask her. Yeah. She and you could set up an out. FY twenty one budget development folder mm -hmm. in Google. And then these, because it's going to come through on color, when they're in the Google folder, could be in there. I personally would rather look at a hard copy. Yeah, I mean, I like both. I like to look at it for a while, then I like to play right. with it. And then there's some things, um, you'll see that, for instance, yeah. town auditor, the, it's about the same. We work the hourly rate. Cynthia is not using as many hours of time as what we budgeted for, so we're suggesting a decrease in the line item from FY20 of 6,000 to FY21 of 5,000. You see where I'm on page two, for instance, at the bottom. You see where it says town auditor? Yes. Okay, that's the, that's the monthly one that Nemrick's doing. Cynthia Stoddard is the person doing it. And you'll see FY20 we budgeted six. It's not she's not using up all of her hourly monthly rates. So this is a decrease from six thousand to five thousand. And then for instance, I think Sandra said she put in um Excuse we, me. Bless we, you. Bless you. we increased, for instance, on the bottom of page three postage. Um, because we know in F in FY19. We spent more than we had budgeted. That's in large part due to the mailing of all these absentee ballots. Right. And you'll see that notation where it says to account for absentee mailing. Mm -hmm. And up above when it talks about NEMREC and computer DRA and there's an explanation. I think she's done a really good job of trying to explain why something has gone up or gone down. And because I'm meeting with her hopefully weekly, Probably not this week. Um, if you have questions, hopefully I can be in a position to better answer them. And you'll see on page, like page four, um, CVRPC, VLCT, we don't have their actual numbers for the, oh, it is, it is an actual number. It's 
some Vermont solid waste and the county tax that we don't have an actual number for, and those always come in like right at the last minute. At least the county tax one does. County tax. What county? It says taxes, dues, and assessment. No, I see. I just said like it's so funny. You I know, know it is. But and on the other hand, it's five hundred dollars. That's not right. <laughs> 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 so I was just trying to see if there was a way that we could do, do it better and more efficiently. So that's my suggestion. We change. Oh, we change. For instance, um, the let's see. The way that we pay Katie to do our recording for us and for Conservation Commission, we're changing the way we pay the DRV recording person too. Instead of just saying, you're gonna get this much money a year, we're gonna pay that person, whoever it is, to do it the same way. And they, they meet so infrequently that we should save a little bit of money on the recording person, the recording secretary for the DRV. Were we paying a stipend to that person? Yeah. yeah. Huh. And, which is what we used to do with Rose. You know, we used to pay a stipend rather than a hourly amount. And Katie, I know she doesn't charge us for every single minute, but we've saved money, you know, in the way we're doing it for us in the conservation commission. Well, actually, in a stipend makes sense when you meet as, you know, going back to the value equation that Ruben was laying out. On the other hand, with a DRB, when they meet so infrequently, they meet so infrequently. So he'll, yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's the same. Going to be the same person, but well, we're going to pay them consistently with the way we pay Katie, which <coughs> seems like a fair way to do it. Right. You know, if we're doing it for conservation and select board, then they should get paid the same way. I I appreciate the. Let's take it home study it, ask her questions. I would, I, I still, I would, if we're going to drop a meeting, I would say let's keep the 14th and see how we do. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. Um, yeah, and you know, we, after that, we may say we don't need to meet in January, but we're still going to have to come for the final budget. Sure. And just from, on this note, um, we are a little behind schedule from where we normally are this time of year on budget, although Sandra has things so well organized. Right. Maybe. I feel like we're I'm not the, sure if we're ahead or behind no, by not in like, terms of how many times we've I, met on the it. The numbers oh. may be right. Where I, where I, what I really want to look at, you guys know me, is I want to look at the bottom line. What does that look like? Right. We haven't Big. even talked about right. We haven't even talked about salaries. What does that mean? Right. And then and then still all the questions we were asking last year, when we have a sense of the whole thing, mm -hmm. then. Um, what are the hard choices? And right. That's really and that's what we might have to do on the 14th. On, well, no, we might have to do that either at a, depending on what other budget stuff, what other items there are, it seems like there's all kinds of stuff that always pops up. Right. We may be able to do it at a regular select board meeting uh -huh. so that I think what John's saying, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, we're not meeting every single Monday night that we right. typically have because I'm coming in, Sandra's putting this stuff together. And then we can share it and save you guys all right. more time. I mean, I'm probably spending as much time on it as before, but or more, right? So maybe not more though. If you're, if it's just you kind of working with Sandra, yeah. how it feels more efficient. It does. Yeah. It does. And when she puts in these explanations, you know, if I don't understand what it means, and probably the rest of everybody else isn't going to either. Right. All right. This is okay. good. Thank you. But I would like to. Yeah, we've never had anything like this. No. No. This is. I mean, this is great. Good process improvement. And I'm getting, you know, copies of stuff. For instance, like from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission sent a, a letter saying that their rate is going up five cents per five cent increase per capita. So we know what that means. Literally nickels and dimes. Yeah. And we get such good service from oh, the right. RBC. Yeah. Well, what does that mean, 5% per capita? Five cents per household, I think. Is it no, it's household? per capita. Per capita. It's five cents times 1,600. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay, not household. Okay, that's person. what it means. Yeah. All right. 
Right. Yeah, we can probably um, not five percent. No, 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 five cents. Yeah. And we, you know, what are we gonna do? Say no? And then we don't say thank you. Right. They we get really good service from them. We're very lucky. You know, they fight all the grants. I mean they they're mm -hmm. more or less self supporting. We just chip in a little bit around the edges. I would like to go into um, executive session after I do this other update. Um, Eighty dollars, five cents, and sixteen hundred. So, pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, UVM's Capstone Roads project. We should. It sounds like we should have a report from them pretty soon. Um, I can't go to their presentation in Burlington on December fourth. I'm going to be at a um, ordinance enforcement. Training session report through VLCT. They're they're presenting it to their groups, and then you know they'll probably make some tweaks and then send it to us. So I'm assuming we'll get this report sometime in December. Um, I'm hoping to have a draft of our select board report by December 9th. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'll do my best. Um, and this is usually where I enlist Rose and Katie's help with highlights. So if you ladies could help me out with that, I would appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Um, Maple Corner Store is going to come on the 9th, um, the new owners, so that we can what approve. Owners? It's the prospective owners. The, right, the new prospective purchasers. To They have to have their they want to get their liquor licenses in order, so when they close, they can immediately start. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Um, so word them so they're transferable. Are we allowed to do that? They're not transferable, but we are allowed to approve them ahead. Oh, yeah. Really? Because we, I've been emailing back and forth with Anne Marie and Judy and huh. um, the liquor person at the state level. It's their anticipated closing date. End of December? Mid December? Mid December to end of December. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, Thursday, December 5th, 7 o'clock, East Montpelier Fire Department quarterly meeting, and this is where they will present us with their proposed, they have to remember it's proposed, budget for FY21. And then as per what we've been doing over the last many years, we then meet with the East Montpelier Select Board to discuss their propo the proposed budget of the fire department. Um, and Bruce called me and said, could we meet with them, the East Montpelier Select Board being them, on Monday, December 16th. And he said he would put us down at whatever time we wanted. I think they start at 6.30 or 7. That's their regular meeting night? Yes. I think that's the regular meeting night. They're, they meet on the first and the third. Yeah, their meeting yeah. night is different than us. So I think last year they came here. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because I remember the fire department not liking our decision. Is that one that was? Yeah. Um, okay. So I just I need to know from I, I don't need have to my calendar with you. Okay. So t homework then for Sharon and everybody else. Can you make it to the meeting on December 5? I'm going to have to do a special agenda. And are you available on the 16th to meet with the top player slide board? So if you guys could look at your calendars and get back yeah, to me. Yeah, I mean, for me, it would be 7 or 7, you know, 7.15. You know, okay. I'll be coming so, straight from work. All right, so Rose is okay. For either, for both meetings, you're saying? Yeah, okay. yeah, 7 o'clock. And Katie, are you available? I need to double check on the 5th. Okay. I can do the 16th. Okay. I'll get back to you. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, Memorial Hall folks are not ready to come and talk to us yet. They're still doing stuff because, don't forget, they have some requirements in that letter that we did back in March of last year of things that they need to do in order to access the conservation funds is that would be paid out over two years, so they need to do that. Well, they were supposed to set up a committee already. Right, there are, We were supposed to have representatives on it. 
Right. So because the Bible says they're meeting and they're not including us. Mm, that's not what I heard. Well, they're obviously meeting on a regular basis, and we don't know what's going on. Well, we're no, they, to they be were part of an ongoing planning process. They were supposed to come to the board with. Um, I don't think I brought the letter with me tonight. I usually have it in my. If you look at the March, I think it was March 18th of last year letter, there are certain things that they're supposed to do as far as setting up a committee to um, While you're finding that, Denise, I think that, I think, John, this is one where it's not a town property and we've got good people. We need to, we need to be careful about getting offended that we're not involved and instead I'm not saying that you were no, just in case I understood our condition the condition of our letter as, as that. yeah I think the letters in the folder it oh, is it's upside there. down oh, that's, oh, why John, that's why that's why I, John, that's why John, yeah. <laughs> I mean I've looked at this letter so, so many times I, that's why I know the date it seems like it. you go to the print screen you can flip it yeah mm -hmm. oh there we go yeah um, so yeah, we're down. Opportunity review and comment. First of all, I have an opportunity to review and comment on the conservation of preservation easements. And I reminded Chris and Gus and Jan and Mary Elder Jacobson about look at this letter. There are things you guys need to do. And they assure me that they will do them to review the final easement language to ensure the public purposes. Um, disbursement would be 20,000, 20,000, and 10. And then also one of the biggies is they're supposed to um, set up a committee which includes members of the Conservation Commission to look at, I think you gotta go down just a little bit more, Cliff, I can't remember what it's called, some kind of a Thing they're supposed to set up. Um, there it is. They're supposed to come up with a management plan. So they've got stuff to do and they know it. And if, you know, when they come to us, if they haven't done what they're, they've been asked to do okay, in this so letter. We're not, we're not, they're not the one. No. If they haven't done what we've asked them to do in order to access the money, then we'll just send them back to do what they need to do. It's pretty simple, they know. I feel like I've, you know, okay. kept in contact with them and reminded them several times. So on the property tax issue, my understanding is they're gonna be pursuing Through, legislative change. Right. Yeah. And if they're successful, they would just swap out, because right now that property, or the property has historically been legislatively exempt, statutorily exempt right. from property taxes. So. There's no burden on the town, like when we exempt properties here, we have to pick up the education fund shortfall. Right. Oh, so they, so they just want to basically assign their current status to the new organization? Right. Yeah. 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 They, they, they've asked they what you call our non-profits on that. Yeah, that would yeah, right. be great. So, oh, yeah, so that's what they're that. doing, and they may or may yeah. not get that approval. We're they nice. may, so anyways, yeah, they're, they're, that's, just that's so you know, they're working on that too. And I've been in contact <coughs> prodding them just a little bit because we need to know. Right. And it would have to go on yep. a town warning if we want to exempt that much. For this year? Yeah. Well, well I know legislatively. I know. Yeah, because I mean I still live to the printer in January. Right. So anyways, they're they're aware of it. I keep asking them how are things going, you know, keeping tabs on it a little bit. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, most of no, I just feel like we we probably wouldn't want to make those exemptions for this year. Well, so, right. I mean, the, the the town tax would be small compared to what the school tax would be. Right. And as the building gets renovated, right now I don't know what the value is. We'd have to ask the listers. But as the building gets renovated and the value goes up. There's a bigger percentage of it's waterfront. It's right. already a high value property as compared to the right. Other so when it's all so fixed up, right. exempted properties. So you that, know, the yeah. value of and the tax dollars is going to climb. Right. So it's just something just so you know what's going on. 
Yeah. Um, CV fiber, they were come, gonna come tonight, but good thing they didn't. So I switched them to, <laughs> to, to the ninth, and I just heard on the news that they got a $60,000 yeah, for rent. 66? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. 60 or 67? Yeah, mm -hmm. We have more people using our internet on our road, and we're noticing. Really? So anyways, they're gonna Slow come on, down. David Healy's gonna come on December 9th, so if you have any questions that you wanna think oh, about. Oh, so you knew they wouldn't be here. Right, right. No, I canceled okay. them and said, can you come oh, on the okay. ninth instead? Okay. Because I thought it might take a while with Ruben, which it did. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, traffic ordinance, Alfred and I still have to do this. It's not, I haven't forgotten. Yeah. Um, just a reminder about the budget and warning meetings. Yep. Um, no. We don't want a meeting on the 23rd, do we? Nope. No. Good. I'm having a party that night if anyone wants to come. Oh, sounds good. Carolyn party. Carolyn Burry. We have to sing. If my name's not Carolyn, can I come? <laughs> um, okay, the town office, just a reminder, is closed Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You remember they were open on Veterans Day. Right. And yes. they swapped it yep. out. Um, minutes, Sorry. and then I want to go into executive session, please. I didn't, I didn't have a chance to look at the minutes. I did. They looked fine. I didn't have any changes. Did you look? I don't think seven. I looked. No, it'll be earlier. But, but fine. They were. We could breeze through it quickly. Usually they're really right on the money. Mountain tamers. That's always good. Yeah. Zoning commissioner, good. We approve. Zoning so administrator, you're you're zooming too fast. <laughs> there was. He's zooming. No, but there was nothing really, like, there's nothing dense in there that we have to no, say, oh, slow no. down, did we get that one right? No, and Katie did a good job with um, the audit presentation stuff, which was pretty straightforward, and that's all in writing. So we never approved the Maple Corner current liquor license that they no, need? No, no, we never did that because... Um, Couldn't find it. Did we get our records back from Wyatt Healy? I thought you had. What? I thought Wyatt Healy had some records of ours. I think the last time I, I've asked Jennifer a few times, and it's questionable whether they got it all. Okay. What do you tell? And whether this? or not he even kept very good records. Okay. It's part of the problem. Oh, okay. Right. I remember that. So does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Can you keep going, Cliff? I'll second. Mm, all the audit, right? Yep. Was that I like it, it. we have a very healthy fund balance. We do balance. have a very healthy fund balance. Oh, there's the stuff where we're also thinking about for Bennett. Oh, fraud policy. Actually, that's Where's not it? accurate. The state employee's retirement is not woefully under funded. Who said that? It's the teachers. I think that Fred said that. No, he said that. He's been wrong. They keep saying that. They keep pushing us together and they're separate. I'm there. Except for I got a letter saying that they are having some issues in our. They might take Some money total out of our funding from. is thirty-seven billion dollars. They might take money out of our, like I don't know how they can do it because they've already agreed yeah, to I my retirement. I think it's going forward. They want to reduce the benefit. They want to. They've been saying it for years. David Coates. Yeah, there. I don't know how they can do that to somebody who's already no, signed the paperwork. It's a contractual uh, issue. It sounded like they were they were looking to maybe take money out of my. Retirement check, but I don't see really how they can do that. But unless they file, they might come and explain how they can. To me. Yeah, if the state file. I think that would be fair. Bridgeport, <laughs> Connecticut, did that, but they filed for bankruptcy. Okay, so rather than spending a lot of time on this, is it? Are you want to okay. approve them or what? Do you want me to change it to just say Flag du Duplassi noted that the state employees blah blah blah? So it's clear that he said that, or yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. 
or take it out if it's a mistake. I mean, mm-hmm. if it's just wrong. It wasn't a big part of the conversation in any case. Should we right. take it out? It wasn't, it wasn't, you, yeah. You take it out, it doesn't matter. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. folks, I wasn't here, thanks. <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, teachers has been under fun, has been yes. in trouble for decades, and it still goes on. It's a long story. Sins of the fathers, yep. Yes. Uh, okay, so make the motion to approve the minutes. John already did. Oh, okay, right. second. I think. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. There was a second, we're just waiting to vote. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved with that change as noted that Katie will do. Mm-hmm. All right, now if somebody could make a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel matters. So moved. At 9.37. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 